Brand disclaimer, the views and opinions expressed by individuals on this platform, the callers plus invited guests are their own. The information you hear does not reflect the overall views of all parties associated with this brand. We encourage everyone to research all things heard live or via archive for edification purposes. Discretion is advised. Don't touch that dial. You're now listening to the Big Talk Free Radio. Hebrewway.com, high quality custom Israelite apparel store. The place to find scripture based attire for men, women, and children of all ages. We have a wide range of t shirts, hoodies, sweatshirts, caps, beanies, and bags available in a full range of sizes. Also, the ideal place to find Israelite gifts for family and friends. Hebrewway.com is geared toward awakening men and women and especially the youth worldwide. Try our uniquely crafted collection with free shipping on eligible items. Help spread the word of the Most High. Visit us at Hebrewway.com. That's Hebrewway.com. My name is Kiaja, and if you want to hear the best debates in the world, come check out Debate Talk for You, hosted by my dad, Sal Showtime. Bye. Hey, what's going on, everybody? How you guys doing? Welcome to another show. You're now listening to Season 9 of Debate Talk for You Radio. I'm your host, Sal Showtime. Uh, we are back once again. Tonight is another open mic segment, family. Open mic. We ain't do these in a long time. Uh, actually, I did one uh, two days ago, and I, I received a lot of good feedback. A lot of people like the um, open mic show, or anybody, and I mean anybody, can call in and uh, bring up different topics, and you know, we'll discuss them right here on Debate Talk Radio. It's an open mic segment for the audience. Uh, we do have special guests invited to come to the platform. However, uh, listen, uh, all the callers out there are always invited to call in and be a part of the conversation. Again, the number is 319-527-6239. That's what's called an open mic, you know, so you can bring up various topics, all of that, all that I ask, as usual. We still got to keep it clean. <laughs> still got to keep it professional as possible. I know sometimes it's hard to do with some of the topic matters because some of the topics that we bring up on the show, is very, people are very passionate about the, some of the issues uh, definitely understandable, but uh, we don't have to use foul language in order to get your word across, you know, or get irate to get your message across. So we're going to get this thing started again. The number is 319-527-6239, open mic segment. I have a special guest here right now, and uh, a lot of y'all hear this, brother. He calls into a lot of the shows. Uh, definitely been a supporter of Debate Talk for you for a long, long time. we actually been in the Alliance then. It's been a, a minute. Since you've been in the Lions then, but uh, we got to bring him back on the platform. Uh, this is my brother, Brother Mercy. Welcome to the show. Brother Mercy, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. What's up, man? What's going on with you, man? I know I called you on short notice, but I appreciate you for being here, man. Yeah, man. You know, I'm just happy to be here uh, because, you know, debate talk for you. It's a great place to uh, talk and debate important issues that's affecting our community. And I always like calling in on the South Showtime Debate Talk You Show. Yeah, man. So, you know, I decided to call you in because there's a couple topics on my mind, brother. There's a couple, a couple topics on my mind. <laughs> and I wanted uh-huh. to pick your brain on these matters. And uh, I see somebody else calling in. Let me see who this is. Hold on. Uh, 563210, you're live. Uh oh, the place of music. Yeah, that's weird. I was just trying to check out what's going on tonight. That's all. Oh, okay. All right. Well, I got you, man. Well, if you want to join in, you can press number one, brother. I appreciate you calling in. But yeah, man, you know, listen, man, I got a couple things in my mind. I said, Brother Mercy is a perfect brother to speak about this topic (laughs) because, you know, we spoke in the past behind the scenes about a lot of different things. Uh, And one of the topics I want to bring up and actually be able to put this to my mind reparations. (laughs) <laughs> that's not let's talk about reparations, that's right. man. That's right. Yeah. that's right. Yeah, let's talk about that, and, man. And, 
let's, let, listen, dude, is that even real, brother? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, some people actually <laughs> think that's going to go down, the reparations, you know, they're expecting it to happen uh, for our people. I mean, of course, I would love for it to happen. <laughs> Why not, right? <laughs> but what are the consequences mm-hmm. of that? Is there a realistic way to put that together, you know, the system putting that together? Do you even trust the system giving us reparations? There, Brother Mercy. Oh, you guys ready to talk? Oh, yeah. I mean, it's the thing is, man, I had to be real with you. I mean, um, a lot of people have got reparations except us. So uh, that's what you got to understand. Can it be done? Of course it can, man. It can be done. Um, do I trust them? Of course I do. I trust them to do everything else, don't I? I pay my taxes to them. So why I trust them to put my money in their bank. So why can't I trust them to pay reparations? The only thing we need to talk mm-hmm. about is make sure it's the right amount. Right. You know, make sure now you said right other people amount. you said other people get reparations. Uh who 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 do you know getting reparations right now? Japanese. Not right now. They've already gotten it. Oh, they got it, right. Huh. You yeah. said the Japanese? Yeah, they already got it. I'm not gonna get it right now, huh? You said the Japanese? Yeah, most countries we go to war with, man, like a lot of countries we go to war with, we end up rebuilding them, man. Mm. Um mm. A lot of countries go to war. We rebuild them, man. Like the Vietnamese, we rebuilt Vietnam. They don't tell you about it. We, we rebuilt Vietnam. We, we rebuilt Germany. Um, I mean, we give a lot of countries aid, man. Right. A lot of countries. Yeah, yeah. The America the, is the police. The, uh, the America is the police. Uh, the world, right? <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> it is. But what's the best way to police the world after you give them money? See, after you give them money, you control people, see? So, mm. you know, that's all it's about. They control us through money. You know what I'm saying? So you're saying, so, there's, a catch uh, to, you get, you're saying there's a catch to the reparations. There's a catch to it. Oh, no, no, no. No, there's no catch to it. What I'm saying, though, is um, at least they paid them back. They refused to pay us back. So I'm just saying, as far as – I was just talking about giving money generally. This country gives money – to a lot of different people, groups of people. It has no, and not just the country they went to war with. But I'm just saying, they've given rep. This nation is given reparations to a lot of people, except the Indians. Now the Indians, they did get reservations to, um, but as far as reparations, us and the Indians, man, we ain't get no reparations, man. We ain't mm-hmm. get no reparations. The now, Germans why got their nation know? rebuilt. Now, why do you think that is? Uh, why, why, why do you think that is? Why do you think that we, you know, listen, you know, a lot of us, you know, know the history when it comes to this country, slavery, you know, basically building this country. Uh, we deserve it more than anybody, right? Why do you think that is that uh, we haven't gotten any reparations yet, in, in your opinion? Well, part of the problem is we assimilated. You know, I mean, you know, one of the arguments that's brought up about Dr. King, one of the critiques, is that, yeah, he was a great leader, but he also hurt us in some ways because he assimilated. And when you assimilate, that's like a, a what they call it. A, you, you, you make, you, you're, in other words, you're trying to come together and eat the same table. That's what he talked about, us coming together, the, the table of brotherhood and all that. And then you forget one another and all that crazy nonsense. Then you don't have to pay the debts. You know what I'm saying? So in some ways, Dr. King helped us. A lot of ways he has. In some ways, he hurt us because... He met black. He, you know, a lot of black people use his speech to stop fighting for what's owed to them. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like the nation of Islam, they come up with their own nation. You see what I'm saying? So you got to come up with your own identity. Like the the Germans, the Germans and the Japanese, what they do, man, they kept their own identity. You know what I'm saying? They, you know, the, even the Indians, that you know, they live on the reservations. You know what I'm saying? They just they just flat out refuse the Indians. But I'm 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 just saying we 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 assimilated. That's what hurt us. We assimilated. When, you know we had our own towns. We had our own. We was about to form our own government. But they hurt us too, though, because you know they 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 would kill our leaders. You know they would burn our churches. You know what I'm saying? So 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 it's not like they just let us do. We had a Black Wall Street going on, sir. We had a Black Wall Street. Think about that, man. A Black Wall Street. We was on our way. You hear me? On yeah. our way. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but it got bombed, right? So yeah. that's what. So I'm not saying that it could not have happened, but if we would have got that going, the Wall Street, cause we got the black colleges. Look at all these black colleges we done started, man. 
And a lot of the great ones were started back in the 1800s. We came out of slavery. See, people don't understand that. Our great right. universities was not started in good times. It was started in hardship. So I'm, I'm just saying, we, we can do the same thing today that they did back then, but we don't have their mindset. So, you know, where, where's the next Howard at? Where's the next North Carolina A&T at? You know, where, you know, where's the next um, Spellman? Where's the next Morehouse? Ain't no more, man. That's it. More mm. house, man, all them great institutions. That's it, man. That was started way back in the 1800s, man. Yeah. You know, the Sorry. great ones? You know, the ones you, you know, the great ones? Nah, man. You ain't got no great ones within the last 50, 50 years. You ain't got no great ones within the last 50 years. You ain't got mm. no great institutions. So, I'm, I'm just saying, man, you know, what, what hurt us is our mindset, number one, number two. But, you know, it wasn't just our fault. They bombed out Black Wall Street. They burned down our churches, you know. Yeah. So I, I'm not going to say it's all our fault, but what I'm saying is we've lost that drive that our ancestors had, man. Um, yeah. We, yeah. We, yeah. We, we anything that we put together, blue. anything that we put together was basically uh, torn down, destroyed, infiltrated, <laughs> you know. But okay. all of it wasn't. But see, that's the mm-hmm. point. All of it wasn't because we still got Howard. We still got right. Spelman. We still got Morehouse. We still got A and T. You know what I'm saying? So all of it right. wasn't. You just, I'm just trying to. So you know, yeah, they destroyed the the Wall Street, but we still got Howard. We still got Spell. We still got A and T. We still got you know Hampton. You know what I'm saying? We still got Grand right. State. You know what I'm saying? We still got them. They still here. So you know, all, all, all I'm trying to say is that a lot of us have survived, but a lot of it was burned up. Like the Black Wall Street was a serious threat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that, that, that was like a. <laughs> yeah. now, I don't know if a lot of people thing. know too much about the. I don't, I don't. You know, it's crazy. A lot of people don't. You know, <laughs> but can you for the audience? Can you explain like what Black Short or Black Wall Street was really all about? What was that? You know, for the audience, Scott. You know how you got the White Wall Street. <laughs> we had yeah. the Black Wall Street. <laughs> and you know how powerful Wall Street is. You know yeah. how powerful Wall Street is, though. So we had yeah. a black one. And so all I'm trying to see, of course, it was just starting. It wasn't as great as the white one. But if we had kept it going, it would have been mm-hmm. just as great or greater. So all, all I'm trying to say is it deals with banks, man. And see, when you when you own in banks, see, you really ain't got money until you own a bank. <laughs> mm-hmm. You own a bank, you got money. You know what I'm saying? You got real mm. money. <laughs> mm. If you own a place where people put their money in, then you really got money. And then not only that, land. Land is also, land is actually more valuable than money, you know. And so when you talk about land and gold and stuff like that, you know, that, that stuff is even more valuable than money. But I'm just talking about, you know, us getting portions of land and, um, you know, like you said about the Black Wall Street, and then the banks, man. Like for example, the banks, man. That joke is deep, yo. Like the president of Howard, the president of Howard is is a part of the governing board with the uh, with the banks. See, a lot of people don't know this. He he he's part of the uh, the bank, uh, the governor, the because the bank has a a governor of banks. In other words, <laughs> this joke deep, yo. <laughs> Uh-huh. <laughs> Just like you got a governor of a state, right? Right. You got governors of banks uh-huh. <laughs> that they right. vote in office that you don't know nothing about. <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh-huh. You know that? Do you know your your banks vote? Yeah. You know, uh-huh. I mean, I mean, can you think about? Can you imagine that stuff? Is all we talk about the president. We mm-hmm. we may talk about the mayor. We may talk about the. We may seldom talk about the congressman and the. Senators and that stuff, but you don't hear nobody talking about the people that vote the the, 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 yeah. gov- the, the bank governors in because they control the interest rate. You know, like mm-hmm. when you go get a loan and all that, you yeah. know, they give money to the Department of Treasury. They the ones who give money to the Department of Treasury. So you keep talking about the president and all this, man. They really don't run stuff. It's the banks and the people that control know. the interest rate and go. <laughs> <laughs> Those pr- those yeah. private entities and all those banks are private. Mm. So you know, so you got private people running the country, man. You know, so 
a lot of stuff that you think is run the country, the president don't really run the country, man. It's these private banks that run the country. You know. All on, all on, so like, yeah. I see we got a lot of people calling in. Once again, the number is 319-527-6239. And simply press number one, y'all. If y'all want to join the conversation, it's an open mic. It's an open mic. Anybody can join the conversation. You know, just got to keep it clean. But uh, you still can join the conversation. <laughs> Once again, the number is 319-527-6239. Uh, so if you missed the earlier, you know, portion of the show, uh, but the Mercy says that uh, uh, when it comes to reparations, that uh, these are the Japanese already received. Uh, some reparations in the past. So it is actually possible uh, for black people to get reparations. Um, now, let's say, no, well, well, let me ask you this first. Do you believe it's going to happen in our lifetime? Hey, man, I had to be real with you, man. I had <laughs> to be straight with you. I mean, I'm, I'm trying to be positive as possible, you know, but mm-hmm. is it really going to happen? Probably not. Just like the, I told you about the Indians. I keep telling you, mm-hmm. going back to the Indians. So right. if they ain't give it to the Indians, they probably not going to give it to us. But we can, But see, this is what I'm trying to tell you. We can force their hand. See, you got to hold on to your identity in order to get reparations because they got to know who to pay. Mm-hmm. See, the problem with us is, see, the problem with us, we don't know who we are, man. See, when you write a check, you got to have the name. So who are they paying reparations to? You can't just say you from Africa. Africa is a continent, man. See, the Germans, <laughs> that's a nation. The Japanese, that's a nation. <laughs> you can pay a nation, but we're not a nation, man. Mm. We, we, you, do you know what country you're from in Africa? Mm. Which one? What about the what about them DNA tests though? <laughs> you can do the DNA. Come right? on, man. <laughs> Come on, man. Really? Uh-huh. Really, Sal? I gotta yeah, bring that to the but, table, man. I gotta bring it to the table, man. We gotta talk about it. But, yeah, people but, doing their DNA tests again. You know, they saying, "Oh, I found out I'm from this part of Africa or from that part of Africa." Do you believe those DNA things are accurate? Oh, I'm not saying they're not accurate, but again, you're talking about a nation, mm-hmm. man. Because, see, let, let, let me explain to you how this works, man. See, what we got to have, what we don't have, and I keep going back to this bank thing. See, what's better than having their own in a bank is is what these other nations got that we ain't got. They got their own currency, man. See, Japan got their own currency. Germany got their own currency. So you can have a currency exchange. So we mm-hmm. don't have our own currency. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? You got to have your own. So if they pay us, they're going to pay us with their own money. That's crazy, yeah. yo. How mm-hmm. they going to pay us with their money? <laughs> no, mm. you make them pay you with your money. You know what I'm saying? You make them pay you with your money. Because mm-hmm. if you ain't got your own currency, you ain't got no power. All right. Well, like I mean, you said, yeah, like I said, when it comes to our people, like, you know, we are, we are all over the place pretty much as far as um, some people don't even want to claim uh, being African exactly. you know, or Africa, <laughs> exactly. you know. <laughs> <laughs> so the reparation issue is going to be probably a big issue because people don't even want to claim, listen, I'm not from Africa. What? I'm not African. You know, so how are you going to allocate the money to, you know, to our people? Yeah. Uh, that, exactly. That so... Yeah, but I was going to say, man, we got to see, you know, a lot of see black people, what we got to do is uh, we got to have our own currency, man. We got to have our own currency. If we have our own currency, they will pay us if we had our own currency. We, we're using their money. And as long as we use their money, they control us, man. If you use another man's currency, we got the white man's currency. Do you understand that? If you got the white man, what do you picture you see when you look at your currency? You see a white man on there, right? Mm-hmm. So why do right. you think they put the picture on there? Why do you think they put the picture on there, Sal? <laughs> <laughs> As a reminder <laughs> where this money came from, right? <laughs> so, so they want you to know who in charge, bro. Right. So, I mean, it's real simple. I mean, it, you ain't got to make this complicated. So when you go to, like, say, like, Jamaica, you don't see a white man on the, on, the, on the currency. You see a black face on the currency, right? Mm-hmm. They got their own mm-hmm. currency. So, yeah, when you got your own currency, then 
that's when you start making real money. See, you can't make money unless you make money. You ain't catching what I said. <laughs> and I heard you. I heard you. You can't make money unless really you mean, make money. I got you. <laughs> Are we really making money? That's the question. Right. Now, when you when you make, I'm gonna tell you what happens when you make money. When you making real money, you see somebody look like you on the on the paper. That's how you know you making real money. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But but if you see the white man on the, on, the, on the paper, then you ain't really you, you making their money. And and let, and and let me tell you how this works. Remember, Yahshua told them they came to Yahshua and they showed them the the, uh, the coin. It was a portrait of Caesar on the coin. Right. And um, Yahshua looked at the portrait on the, on the coin and saw the portrait of Caesar. Caesar. A lot of people don't even understand that scripture. What Yahshua was saying, he was saying this coin is the property of Caesar of Rome. That's what he was telling. He said, "Give this back to Caesar." <laughs> See that dollar bill you got in your pocket? He's saying, "Give that back to the white man. That belonged to him." <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now hey, bring family. me something. That mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Now bring me something that looks like me. You know, and that belongs to because every piece of currency you get, it says the property of the United States. That's what it says. So mm-hmm. it's letting you know who the currency belongs to. So when you got your own currency, like Jamaica and like, um, you know, the African nations, you got your own currency, that's when you really running stuff, man. But you're not mm-hmm. running stuff if you got to use somebody else's currency, man. You, 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 you still under their control, man. Yeah. So now, see, now when it comes and, to this uh, reparation, yeah, when it comes to reparation yes. and then your concept of when you think about it, let's say it would happen today. Um, how would they distribute the money? Like what type of system? Like how, and you're, when you think about it, how would they do that? There's so many of us, you know. How would they do that? How would <laughs> how would they put the money out there? But see, this is the whole problem, man. Sal, mm-hmm. see. This is the whole problem with your question. Mm-hmm. See, you looking for the white man's money. <laughs> but you can't do that, man. See, uh-huh. That's the whole problem. You looking for his money. You look at him to pay you with his money. No. Mm-hmm. Nah, man. When, okay, let me tell you how important having your own money is. Mm-hmm. And I try to explain this to some of the dignitaries. I try to explain this. I try to tell right. them. I say, look, if you have your own currency, you no longer have to pay taxes. You want to know why? Because this government don't mm-hmm. take foreign currency as taxes. Right. <laughs> mm-hmm. And that's what I'm trying to say. You can't even buy nothing in this country with foreign currency. So, therefore, you no longer under their jurisdiction. You are totally mm-hmm. free. So, that's what I'm trying to tell you. And then you can exchange your currency for their currency. Mm. Well, you can I, do now, that actually, if you just really want to. Yeah, now I, I was I understand what you're saying as far as uh, the currency and everything. What I'm saying, if it were to be implemented today, you know, when you think about it, according according to your concept, like how would it go as far as distributing whatever with gold, whatever? How would it go? Like, what? what uh, tell me a world of black in, in your mind, a world where black people are receiving re- uh, reparations. How does it go in your world? I, I would say, man, in this country right here. I would rather have gold than the white man's money because mm-hmm. I'm going to tell you right now, if you pay them, if they pay you with, if the white man pay you with his money, you're going to give it right back to him. Mm-hmm. And he really ain't gave you nothing because it says property of the white man. <laughs> so you got to give it back. <laughs> mm-hmm. I know you can't, I know people can't see that. Hey, if, if I gave you a million U.S. dollars, you have to give that back because that's property of the United States. Right. I want to mm-hmm. get something that's mine. That still ain't yours. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, get some land. Now, see, that's where you, you want your reparations to be, some land. The 40 acres and the mule that we should have got. Is it possible? Yeah. If it wasn't possible, they would never told us, right? 
They told us that lie. But we, our ancestors made them say it. So, yeah, 40 acres of the mule, yeah. Yeah. Give me some land. Yo. Yeah, hold on one second. Uh, somebody pressing number one. Like I said, anybody could. I, I see we have some Skype callers out there. We have a lot of people on the phone lines. But uh, press number one, and you know we're gonna talk about various topics, not just reparations, but we're touching on it right now, reparations. But uh, the number is three one nine five two seven six two three nine. You know, share your thoughts. What do you think about that? Is it possible? You know, can you imagine a world receipt of uh, where people, black people are actually receiving reparations? And explain to me how that goes. Again, the number is 319-527-6239. Press number one, and we'll add you in. But uh, let's go to the caller. I believe this is Weed Eye. Weed Eye. Yeah. Tell her, tell her, man. I, I, I was getting them about, about the currency. But see, then you talking about the colonization because when you look at it, when America always go to where it is that is is rich is at. So when you look at what the Americans did, Look how they don't went over to Africa. When you talk about King Leopold, how he went over there, took all the rubber from uh, Africa and had the Congos over there. You know what I'm saying? They took a lot of a lot of stuff from over there in Africa. You see what I'm saying? So the thing in, in the end times, let let me just read a scripture and show you what y'all said that they was gonna return all the stuff that all the money that they had taken from us. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Just let me show you that. This is uh, Isaiah 60. And let me see. It says, Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Most High is risen upon thee. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and pledge darkness for the people of the Most High shall arise upon thee, and this glory shall be seen upon thee. And the Gentiles shall come to thy light, and the kings of the brightness of thy rising. Lift up thy eyes round about, and see all the gather themselves and together. They shall come to thee, thy son shall come from far, and thy daughter shall wars at thy side. Then thou shalt see and flow together in thy heart that shall fear and enlarge because of the abundance. And they shall uh, be converted unto thee, and force of the Gentiles shall come together. Watch this. This is going to tell you about how they're going to bring all the gold back. It says, And the multitude of the camels shall cover thee, and the dromedaries of the medium eat for all they from sheep which shall come, and they shall bring gold and incense, and they shall show forth the praise of the Most High. And the flocks of Kedor shall gather together unto thee, and the rams of Nebah shall minister unto thee, and they shall come with the acceptors on the mount also, and I will glorify thy house. And he tells you they're going to bring the gold and the cereal on boats and planes. You see what I'm saying? So we talking about all the things that was already taken from us because, see, what he's talking about, where money goes, you're talking about central banking. And that's where you get to talking about the Rothschilds. Like you said, private-owned banks, hey, the Rothschilds them started there, but the goldsmith was the one that did it before the Rothschilds. They was using uh, sticks, like tree branches and everything for money, to the point right. when it came out to the Rothschilds. Rothschilds was had money. Everything that they had taken from other countries and ended up using it as they own, and they talked about how they funded war between uh, uh, France. I think it was between Britain and France, and they gave money on both sides of the people Regardless, whoever won the war or lost the water, war, they still made gain. Now, when you talk about Fidel Castro, he the one kept America out of Cuba because he already knew about central banking when they came up there. When he died, America's money over there in Cuba right now. And they talked about that because the thing is, what, when you talk about central banking, they can run your country. And see, this is why they was trying to pose war with Iran, because Iran don't want nothing to do with America. And see, they know if they could get their uh, central bank, if they could get their money over there, they could run that government. They could run that system. You see what I'm saying? You got to know how them Rothschilds did that central banking, man. They took, he took all five of his sons throughout the whole world and taught them about central banking and how to fund money in order to promote war. 
You see what I'm saying? And this is how this came about. So when you're talking about reparation, yeah, the Japanese got their money back up in World War One. Black people ain't going to get their money up back until it's prophesied to the end of time. You see what I'm saying? And this is a, this a prophecy right here. You see what I'm oh. saying? Everybody, any other nation that America could go to war with, they the only one would get money back. But when it comes down to black people, look how they did Tulsa, Oklahoma. They bombed that bad boy. They made sure we wasn't doing nothing. Every time black people try to get up, white people will bomb us. They made sure we stay at the bottom. Now, Ghana just released uh, talking about the 400 years of slavery where we able to come back home, and they are actually trying to distribute land over there. That's what's the reason for the prophecy about Genesis 15 and 13 when he said, surely Abraham's seed shall be afflicted 400 years. Now they are letting us return back home and willing to give us land. You see what I'm saying? That's why he's saying it, land is important. You see what I'm saying? So how are you going to be able to grow your crops without land? You see yep. what I'm saying? That's what's the whole point about this. When you deal with central banking, central banking was worth the world. And that's what the Rothschilds did. You even check up on that story with the Rothschilds, how they got out with that, with that money. That reparation ain't going to the end of profit. As far as that mm-hmm. goes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, family, once again, we talk about that reparation. Let's talk about that reparation. <laughs> Number is 319-527-6239. Uh, Mercy uh, call actually drop, but, you know, he's going to call back in. As soon as he does, you know, we'll continue that conversation. But um, as far as uh, we were talking about, as far as if reparations were to go down today, well, first of all, do you believe it can go down today? Or are you saying it's going to ha- happen eventually? That's what you're saying, all right, according to, according to the scriptures. According mm-hmm. to the scripture, yeah. Mm-hmm. Everything they took, they have to bring it right back. Mm-hmm. That's now, what the most has said. Now, how like how would it go? Like in your in your mind, thinking about this, like how would they go about distributing the monies to uh, or, the, or you know to the people? Well, I have to read more in detail with the scriptures about how it says it's going to happen. <laughs> But basically, he's telling you that the money is everything is going to be brought out on the plane for what, how they took it is how they're going to bring it back. You see what I'm mm. saying? As far as that goes. That's the only thing where I have to read more into you, give you more information as far as that with, with that situation. But, yeah, they're yeah. going to bring the money back because, see, now we're going through a, a World War all over again. A World War Three is about to come. You see what I'm saying? And once all these powers get taken out, look what's going on with uh, America right now. China, all them, Korea, them, all these people getting ready to go to war. And this is the thing where y'all saying he got to relinquish power from all these kingdoms, and they going against each other in order for them to even want to even consider it and just like say bring back the money. And it's done and over with. Because he said in the end, Israel is going to rule. You see what I'm saying? Everything that was taken is going to be brought back to the people for which they took it from. You see what I'm saying? That's the whole point about it. Because, see, the thing is, when y'all say he gave us a land that was full with milk and honey, I guarantee you, every time America went to war, they always went to war in the Middle East. And if you know anything about the Middle East, Middle East has the most natural resources that there is in the entire world. And now, ask yourself, why won't they go to war with Europe? Europe don't got no resources like what Africa has. Mm-hmm. Africa got diamonds, gold, uranium, copper, everything. They make a cell phones with copper. Every resource that came from up there in Africa is brought to America in order for them to function there, uh, America, to keep their world running. You see what I'm saying? They can't function without Africa. They can't function without that continent because there's so mm. much natural resources over there. You see what I'm saying? Now, 
Now, you know, when it comes to our people, as far as the Hebrew Israelites are concerned, you know, when it comes to Africa, you know, a lot of people take mm-hmm. issue with that as far right. as uh, the identi- identifying as an African. Uh, mm-hmm. So if reparations were to go down, how would that go down uh, with a lot of our people not even, you know, receiving that as fact uh, as far as being that African? Uh, what's, what's, well, your, what's your thoughts on that? Well, far as African, like, it's true, like, what you said about our DNA. I have done my DNA, and I have found out that um, part, have some parts of Nigerian, Ghanaian, hunter gatherers and Senegal up in there. So this is just showing you that we do come from that country. You see what I'm saying? So when you talk about the transatlantic slave trade, we was brought here. You see what I'm saying? And, and this was the whole purpose about us coming over here, being slaves and everything. Everything is being prophesied to the point is we're told to go back to the land, not to stay in America. And see, a lot of our people want to stay here and think and feel as though, hey, if they give me reparation, we could build us a company. We could build our own business. But you think these white people's going to sit up here and let you run and function a business without them ruling over you? Because if you look at it, check this out. Anytime I try to start a business in environmental remediation, you got to pay taxes every time on your business. I don't care if you got a sole, supply, uh, sole proprietorship, limited uh, liability court business you still got to pay taxes in order to run your business in America. And how you think you how you think white men gonna let you function without them being involved? You see what I'm saying? That's not freedom. That's not liberty. I don't care if you got a business or not. Why should you have a business and still have to pay the white man in order to run your business? You see what I'm saying? Mhm. Mhm. Uh, well, once again, family. Uh, oh, sorry, guys. Continue. Well, that's basically that's what I'm saying. The, the white man is here just to keep America running. You see what I'm saying? As long as our people is here, and this situation to the point is that you think and feel that oh, uh, we could get the reparations, we could start a business in America. But see, that's the thing is, you still got to deal with the white men in order to function your business. And due to the fact is that we have an identity crisis that people is claiming to be African and, you know what I'm saying, all these other nationalities. Y'all already told you who you are. So how you think you're going to get reparations and you claiming to be someone else? You see what I'm saying? Well, the- well, that's what I'm saying. Like, uh, you know, as far as the system is concerned, they have a whole other way of thinking about, you know, our people. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, like that 12 child chart ain't gonna fly when it comes to the, the no, no, that, system. No, that, no, that, that, that's that's flawed. That's flawed anyway. You know what I'm saying? Just like I told you, the world's been upside down. You talking about people that saying, well, oh, Mexicans trying to be uh, part of the tribe trail, uh, 12 tribe chart. But see, then the thing is, you, know, you missing out what well, uh, even the Spanish conquistadors, when you talk about the Spanish Inquisition, hey, mm-hmm. what you think who Columbus, uh, Christopher Columbus was? You see what I'm saying? We talking mm-hmm. about people that came from Portugal and went to Africa and enslaved our people. But then you want to go and say, oh, the Mexicans and uh, uh, Puerto Ricans, are all of them as a part of Israel. No, it's not like that. Now, see, the thing is why they say that, and when I investigated that, check this out. You have Israelites that are black, that do have war, have, that do look like us, that speak Spanish, just like the Brazilians. They went into a captivity with Portugal, and the same thing. They're black with war, have, and they look like us. You see what I'm saying? Argentina, when he talk about their tribe, uh, 12 tribe tribe, they say they from not Nepali. They are black, wool high, but they speak Spanish. 
You see what I'm saying? That's the only reason why that child is out there like that. We ain't talking about people that got wet dog hair. We ain't talking about some people. We talking about people that got black, that look like us, and they got an afro but speak another language. You see what I'm saying? So our people yeah. scattered across in the four corners of the earth, that 12 tribe chart. Now, that's flawed. Only thing what makes that consistent is when you talking about the Africans that came from uh, the people that enslaved Africa and took them back to their land. That's it. Mm-hmm. That's it. Now, some people that don't subscribe to the the belief that we're going to get uh, or not get reparations, the, the, the some of their reasons are is because, uh, as you probably already know, that they're trying to uh, change the currency into a one world, go- you know, way or that you know, according to some people, a one world system where uh, the dollar will be gone. You know, the, and everybody's thinking that it's going to be some kind of a collapse when it comes to the system. Uh, do you believe that that concept is, uh, is real? That's going to actually happen? Like there's going to be a collapse in the system, and there's going to be a change in the currency where you know we don't want to use the dollar anymore, but uh, there's going to be something else in place. Um, that who was that? Uh... That guy that was up on uh, Libya that was talking about using gold for currency, and when they found out, when America found out that this man was trying to bring all people from around the world to Libya, when mm-hmm. he was uh, talking about using gold, you see how they popped him off and killed him. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? That's a certain. That he was trying to get that same power that America had. You see what I'm saying? Because like my man said, you control the people with money. Now, if you give them what they need, you officially own them. Now, you just like when you look at the system now in public assistance and you see the women that's on welfare in men, I ain't going to just say women, but they tell you in certain stipulations that you got to do in order for you to have public assistance through the government. You see what I'm saying? And this is how they control us. Now, right now, uh, they talking about how America is at least like $8 trillion in deficit and trying to find a way for us trying to get out of deficit. Because like you said, hey, president don't run nothing. It's the, it's the private owners that run the stuff. You see what I'm saying? So how they go about, they the ones that tell uh, the president to say this and do that. And go from there, and go from there. You see what I'm saying? They don't, presidents don't own, don't do nothing. Mm-hmm. They not in control of nothing. So yeah. when you talking up, to... now I was gonna say that there's a lot of people out there though. There's the um, Alex Jones. I don't know if you know who Alex Jones is. Yeah, I know uh, about to, him. Yeah. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of brothers conspiracy uh, theory dudes out there, uh, con- so-called conspiracy theory dudes, that's saying that you know there's going to be a major collapse in the system. It's going to happen. Um, do you believe like people like Alex Jones that is put in place on purpose to scare the people about this, or is this actually going to happen? Well, you know what, as I looked in some cases. They was talking about what the school system, about them not having a lot of money for education funding with the teachers and stuff. So a lot of teachers was losing jobs and stuff. Like we just had, I'm down here in Iowa, where they just talked about how the teachers over here in Iowa was actually leaving their jobs over there to go over there to the Illinois side and try to work because, they think that they're giving more money. You see what I'm saying? And this is the same situation where we was dealing with up in Chicago by schools not having a lot of funding that they had to let people go off jobs. A lot of jobs was going on straight. Yeah, it's, it's going to be a collapse because that's the whole thing as far as them trying to keep their business running. They don't know where the money is coming from and how they're going to keep things running. So they got to go to war in order to keep everything run. You see what I'm saying? The more you go over there to Africa and bring back uh, our funders from over there, what you think they're going to do? You see what I'm saying? That's the whole point about 
uh, money is what funds war, which keep money going on. You see what I'm saying? If I agree to do business with Russia to help me fund my country, why not? You see what I'm saying? Mm. And this is the issue that we dealing with right now because, I, yeah, they is running out of money. It's hard to uh, uh, keep education going right now because right now down here where I'm at, they had to shut one school down and had the, the students, like the elementary, they was going. They was getting. They was going to school up in the church mm. because they couldn't have money enough to keep the building going. You know what I'm saying? They lost wow. the money. You see mm. what I'm saying? So yeah, it's coming to that point. Mm. It's, it's gonna come now. Yeah, that's something right there. All right, I see we got callers on the phone line with you. I could join the conversation, family. All you got to do is press number one if you're already on the phone line. But if you're on the Internet and you want to join the conversation, you got to dial that number, 319-527-6239. Once you dial that number, you got to press number one. Press number one, and uh, you can join the conversation. Or you can send me an email for those that are, you know, don't want to really call in but still have a question or a comment. Uh, it's debate talk for you at gmail.com. That's debate talk to number four and the letter U at gmail.com. Now, if we were to receive it today, bro, let's say Donald Trump was like, yo, I'm about to give y'all <laughs> reparations. <laughs> let's say Donald Trump, <laughs> hypothetically speaking, right? Okay. I'll be ready for that. I'll be, we'll, I'll be as a people ready to receive that. You know, if, if it was allocated, the money was uh, given out today, are we ready to, you know, get reparations, in your opinion? Oh, um, right, they'll, they'll jump on that with a heartbeat. But see, the only thing, I ain't going to lie, if they was to give me reparation, I'll leave this place. Because the thing is, why would you <laughs> they give you money? Just why, to, would you uh, leave, why, 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 why would you leave? Why would you leave? No, nah, because, see, the thing is, you got to understand the history of what we've been through throughout all this time, living with white, with white people. When, it, when uh, Martin Luther King did what he did, hey, they showed a picture of him with uh, Jacob Rothschild. You see what I'm saying? And now we talking about people that skin that's been put in place to do things to come against our people. And see, the thing is, you got to understand like this. Check this out. Why would I want to stay in America to continue to be hunted down like a dog, be killed in the streets, just like the same way that y'all prophesied and was happening with our people today? Every time you're going on the news, it's our people that's being killed. It's our women that's being tortured and raped and everything. We had a, a white police that when he sexually assaulted an uh, 18-year-old and, and, uh, uh, up in the police station, and ain't nothing happened to him. You see what I'm saying? And just like when that uh, Zachariah 11 and 5, he said they hold themselves not guilty, that's the same thing, how they killed Philanthro Castile, and the man even told them he had a permit for a gun and still got shot four times. You see what I'm saying? Everything where y'all prophesy is going on right now. You see what I'm saying? Ain't no way in the world I'm going to sit up here and just if somebody tell me, hey, these white people don't like you, man. They don't care for you. Ain't no way in the world I'm going to be around somebody who I don't get along with. You see what I'm saying? You'll be a fool to stay around somebody who you can't get along with. Straight up. I don't care if you got you say only thing you probably say, Well, I I go to work, I come home and I'm cool. But see, the thing is side with this, before I get home, I know I got to pass the police up. You see what I'm saying? And see right. if I'm gonna get pulled over illegal, if they gonna throw a case on me, throw me in jail. You see mm-hmm. what I'm saying? That's a lot of stuff you got to think about before you even make it to the door of your before you to your doorstep. You see right. what I'm saying? So I, I don't want to be involved in that. And what y'all prophesied is what's going on right now. Police is do wait up in the black neighborhood. They do sit and talk to our people where they throw them in cars and give them bogus cases where they end up doing time in jail. 
And then the Rosemont police up in Chicago, they said several people have been sent to police station, claimed to be sent to police station, and never made it there. And when their parents came there looking for their kid, they said, no, we did not arrest this person. But they still missing now. You see what I'm saying? This is the things that we got to think about that people's not paying attention to. Because, see, when you go up into these big cities, hey, them police is just like, hey, dude, if you make a move, I'm going to bust you. You see what I'm saying? You can't do right. nothing. Only thing we're doing is sitting there putting out phone cameras and talking mess. You see what I'm saying? Illinois just made a pass a bill that if you film them without their permission, you could go to jail. Who gonna go to jail for something that might? You see what I'm saying? We not mm. safe. We not safe mm. at all in this in this place. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So, hey, they give me reparation, I'm gone. I'm on the next plane. I ain't finna play <laughs> with. <laughs> uh, I fan once again it's an open mic. Uh, open mic again. Number three one nine five two seven six two three nine. Whatever y'all want to talk about. You can bring it to the table and have a discussion on it. Uh, but if nobody really calls in, then, you know, we can wrap it up in a few. But, uh, you know, the number, it's an open mic. So I see we have people on the phone line checking out the show. Again, the number is 319-527-6239. All right, hold on. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. We got somebody pressing number one. And like I said, y'all, you know that number, 319-527-6239. Uh, 843-908. Who am I speaking to? You're on the air. Line. You're on the air. Yo, what's going on, Sal? It's Brother Jay. Hey, Brother Jay, what's going down, man? What's happening? Not much, bro. A long time, man. Yeah, it's been a minute, man. What, what you want to say about this topic that we just talking about, man? Go ahead. Say, say, say your piece. Man, um, I came in, man. I was, I was sitting back listening a little bit, and um, something caught my ear just now, so I wanted to, to ask the guy. I don't, know if he was, I don't know if he was talking about Jesus Christ or not, but if I'm, maybe I'm mistaken, so I wanted to ask. Um, hey, hey, uh, what's, what's your name, bro? The one that was talking? Rita. Weeda. We die. You die? We die. No. We die. We, like, yeah, we, we die. Oh, we die. We die. Yeah, oh, there we go. All right, what's going on, yeah. man? Um, well, uh, when you had said, uh, JC, was you talking about, you know, Jesus Christ or, or, or Yeshua? Yeah. Nazareth when you were saying about uh, false yeah. God or whatever? Yeah. Uh, uh, why, 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 what is it that, um, why is it that you believe that Yeshua of Nazareth is not the Messiah? Because <laughs> he's, for one, he's not even mentioned in the old covenant that claim to even be the son of God. And not only that, I have information. Okay, I'm going to just say it like this. Have you ever heard about uh, Jesus of Lubeck, the slave ship in 1564 that was funded by Queen Elizabeth to bring yeah, 400 exactly. slaves? Yeah, that was named after an astral man named Jesus. It, it wasn't Jesus of Nazareth, but it was a definite man that had that name. Hold on. Check this out, right? I got a book called the Secret Society of uh, Jesus, and it talks about all this stuff. When you talk about the Crusaders, that forced our people to worship this man, and if we didn't, well, that our people was killed. You see what I'm saying? And you mean well, to tell let, me? Hold on, let me let me ask you a question. Where do you think the well, New Testament on, comes from? Let me deal with that. What you just said just now, though. Okay. Let me deal with that concerning the Crusades, because mm-hmm. during the Crusades you had, well, first of all, that that persecution of the people that was being killed were Christians. You had the Roman Catholics going along, killing a lot of the Christians that would not accept their images, because if you know about the um uh, the the Christian history. When the church was founded after Christ uh, was crucified and you had the apostles go out, the the Christians didn't have images. They didn't walk around with, you know, crosses and crucifixes and, and they didn't have statues of a Jesus or anything because that was breaking the second commandment to do such. Um, and so you had later on, uh, because, you know, there was a great persecution with the Christians in Rome and stuff. Christian, you know, the Christian faith wasn't popular at that time. Hold on, guys. Okay. Um, but then over time, Oh, let me take my son to my uh my wife here. So I can finish here, grab him. Thank you. That's all right. Um, so um and then over time we know that, you know, after great persecution you had, you know, Constantine and all that stuff that went down in Rome where Christian Christianity became, you know, denoted as the, the empire's religion. 
when that took place, um, a lot of perversions took place in the church. And you had the Christianization period where you had, you know, Rome going about um, trying to convert pagans uh, into, you know, at least their brand of Christianity. Because concerning the commandment of Christ, we were commanded to evangelize, but never go and take over land. So there was men that adopted the ways of how God had Israel conquer lands. They, they took that same pattern. And so they took and tried to force convert these pagans who cared nothing about Christ. And then through that conversion, they took away their images and then gave them new images. And so you had a great persecution and a great perversion that took place in the churches, which led eventually to the Crusades and all that stuff, and then eventually the Reformation, where you had this great split in the Christian church, where you had those that that left from under Rome because of the perversion that took place. So, you know, there is a great, and I don't deny it, there was a great perversion that took place in Rome. But, but let me ask you a question. Just Rome and and count that as the Christian faith because that's not what it is. Uh, let me let me ask you a question. Okay, right. where does the, where where do where did the New Testament come from? You tell me where the New Testament come from, since I I don't it, know where it come from. Where did the New Testament say, come wait, from? Okay, when you say when it comes from, what do you mean when it where it comes from? Where, like location. Where 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 did the New Testament come from? How was it? How was it? How what did it come about? Oh, it came about through the blood of the Lamb of Jesus Christ when He pulled out His blood on the cross. <laughs> okay, hold on. Let me, let me say this: You read the uh-huh. Do you read the Old Testament? Yes. Okay. How you ever read the Law of Deuteronomy twenty four and sixteen, where Yah says that the uh, the children shall not die for the father, neither the father die for the son. Every man should die for his own sin. Yes, I've read that. Yes. Okay. Okay. That's a law. So you mean to tell me that y'all said all of a sudden he up and changed the law and turned around and made it possible for a man to die for a sin for for your sin. Well well that, that law that you're quoting is regarding the proverb that used to be in Israel where God said he won't be able to take that proverb anymore, where Israel when we read the scriptures kept being punished for sins that the forefathers committed. For example, they broke the first covenant and the children went into captivity. Or these people broke the covenant and then, what, 3,000 or, well, not 3,000, but, you know, years later on, the Lord finally unleashes the wrath from what the forefathers did. As we see, that was written in the law what he would do. Because he said, you know, visiting the iniquity of the children to the third and fourth generation of those that hate me, but sharing mercy upon, you know, thousands that, that love me keep my commandments. So that was mm-hmm. regarding that problem. That wasn't. That wasn't a command that was saying that, you know, no man would die for your sins. Not a regular no, man. No, 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 hold on. Let me, let me say something. No, no, stop, stop. No, no. Let me say something. Let me say something. One at a time, one at a time, though. One at a time, Okay. Jesus, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, which, you know, I'm definitely, you know, hopefully this conversation leads to me proving this, is, is not a regular man. That was the mistake oh. that the Jews made. No, Okay. Let me read this numbers eighteen and seventeen right here. And now, hold on, so, now, uh, we don't, we don't hold that, hold that thought. Once you read that, uh, I'm just letting you know we got Matt Thomas on the line as well. Uh, read okay. that. You know, we got that. We'll bring him in. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Here goes numbers eighteen and seventeen. It says, okay. "But the firstling of a cow, or the firstling of a sheep, or the firstling of a goat, thou shalt not redeem. They are holy. Thou shalt sprinkle their blood upon the altar." And shall burn their fat for an offering made by fire, for a sweet savor unto the Most High. So okay. God says you cannot redeem a cow or goat or a ram because He said they are holy. So all you all of a sudden now you want to say that we talking about a man dying on the cross, shedding blood when we talking about the blood of animal sacrifice. You see how well, that was the, but that was the covenant of the time, and Jesus Christ wasn't, you know, uh, an animal. And and then number two, that law once again is doing, dealing with the the Levite priesthood and the sacrificial system. That was the covenant of the first covenant. That's how it was established. So of course, that's what they were doing and told to do. But this ain't addressing Christ's crucifixion. If you want to address, deal with Christ's crucifixion, then let's do with Isaiah. Let's deal with the prophets and what they said regarding this person that would pour out his soul for the remission of sin. 
What you do with okay. that? Okay. Uh, hold, on, hold, on, Rita. hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I gotta, <laughs> I gotta, I gotta bring Mac in here. I gotta bring okay, Mac. Anybody go else? Listen. Yeah. Anybody can join the con. It's an open mic, so anybody can join the conversation. The number is three one nine five two seven six two three nine. Simply press number one, and we'll add you in the conversation. I'm Ayana. I see you. I'm gonna bring you in soon. Mac, uh, you can go on the floor. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, <laughs> Cause I know Rita was trying to get in there. You know. Uh, Oh, much respect though. Um, Thank you. But I, I, I <laughs> but I, I, I do understand though. Uh, I, I agree. I, I agree with the. Uh, uh, I will say I agree with the uh, with the scriptures here that it does talk about one who, um, uh, one who's going to take the sins of both Yehuda and Yahshua all, and um, it would have to be a man because it was man that committed the sin. Um, that's why we're seeing these, uh, that's why we're seeing certain sacrifices being performed. Like for instance, um, uh, you know, when, uh, Weta was, uh, uh, when you, uh, elder Weta was going through the law, there's one particular law where it talks about, uh, the sacrifices that it has to be, uh, sacrificed at the altar. If you don't sacrifice at the altar and you just shed the, uh, the lamb or the oxen or, uh, you know, whatever that uh, that flock that you're supposed to be give for, given for a sacrifice, if you don't do it at the place where the Most High has set his name and has said this is where you shall sacrifice it, what happens? The Most High equivocates it to you have shed man's blood and you shall bear your iniquity. So why does he compare the sacrifice, this cattle, this, this, uh, this animal that I have slain, why does he compare its body to... Uh, uh, to that of a man, like what I ba- what I basically done was just murdered a man. So that's kind of like the concept of what we're seeing with the Mashiach here. He is that sacrifice that was um, uh, he is that uh, that sacrifice that was uh, given. And I think the other um, I think the other issue though, uh, as far as um, with the uh, uh, the brother who's the uh, Christian here, I think. Um, when you're mentioning like the the beginnings of the church and, and things of that nature, um, the problem is historically when you're talking about uh, it was Christians that were persecuted. The there there's multiple issues with that. One, historically speaking, when we're talking about Christians, you got to look at who these people were going after. When it was converting all these people and taking these people's lands, these people were people of color. And nobody's talking about that. When you're talking about the, huh? the Crusades and stuff like that, they were going after people of color. They, well, you know, yeah, they, you, yeah, you had a few, uh, uh, you had some uh, uh, Caucasians and everything there. But historically speaking, they were going after people who were black and taking their things. That's what happened in 1492 when it was, uh, you had the expulsion of the, uh, of the Yahudim. If they did not convert to Christianity, they either were expelled to uh, uh, Africa, or they were um, uh, forcefully baptized, or some mm-hmm. of them were enslaved. So, we, I mean, we gotta we gotta um, look at these things not through the lenses of a European, because we know that they're trying to change the history books because we don't look too deeply, uh, excuse me, into these things. But that that's uh, uh, I'll, I'll um, uh, go ahead, Weedon. Okay. okay, yeah. I, I want to I want to say this right because see w- what you talking about a uh, uh, man that pour out of his soul right and, and this we not talking about something about somebody being crucified we talking about it when you look according to the testimony and I'm I'm going to a similar testimony where like where Moses told yeah he said take me. When when Israel was out there making the golden calf, and this is the same situation where we see where David poured out his soul. When you read Second Samuel twenty four, he told Yah that I'm the one who did wrong. Israel shouldn't have to suffer. So when God came to David, he told them choose one. Whether it be seven years of famine, three months of fleeing from all they his enemy, or three days of pestilence. He chose three days. 
And due to the fact that the day was poured out and sold to the most high, he was pleased with him to the fact that check this out. You talking about Christ, right? I want you I want to show you something, and then I want your explanation for this because we're talking about the Levitical priesthood that you claim that Christ is supposed to have, right? And this is Ezekiel uh-huh. 43. Oh, no, no, this is what I'm saying. Do you claim that Christ is part of a Levitical priesthood? No. Okay. Of course, the law so, of Christ should not be free. Okay. So the thing is, y'all says, that he was going to restore everything as it was from the beginning. Now, you tell me, where was Christ in the beginning uh, during the time that Yah was creating the heaven and the earth? Because he said he's he going to restore him. everything as it, as it was before. He was with them. You talking about in the beginning during creation? Yeah. Yeah, Christ was there. He was actually no, he the one was. who did it. Show yes, me he where he was there. Show me where he was All there. Right. Well, all right, well, let's deal with this. Let's start at Genesis. Okay. Let's, deal, let's start at Genesis. And, and uh, we'll work with you. Let Brother Jay, you can do your thing, but uh, after that, let Amayan say some words, too. He's here. But anybody can call oh. in, y'all. Anybody oh, okay. can call in, you know that? Oh, I see somebody else. Right. Okay. Hey, yeah, I can keep talking. Yeah, but make sure to share the mic, y'all. Right, y'all share well. the mic. Yeah. <laughs> All right, cool. Yeah, if I'm going too long, just let me know, man. Um, so in, in, in Genesis, right, so we see in the beginning God or Elohim created heavens and earth. And we know that where Elohim can be referring to, you know, angels, magistrates, or used in reference to the one true God in, in the case of this. Because obviously, you know, as, you know uh, angels or man was made at this time where Elohim was being used. But I want to jump down to the point. In verse 26, um, it says, then God said, or Elohim said, let us make man in our image. Uh-huh. Let us. Who's in this council with God? It definitely ain't angels because men ain't made in the likeness of angels. He's, they're made in the likeness of God. Then it says, according to our likeness, and let them rule over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the sky and the cattle over the earth. What I want to point out is there, there in the Hebrew, um, when it says, and God said, let us make man in our image, it's Elohim, but it's, it's rendered in the plural form. So either me and you, are made in the image of multiple gods, or this plurality in this deity is one. You know, like, here's thou, O Israel, the Lord, our God, the Lord is one. So, so either we're dealing with multiple gods or one God that there's a plurality in it, or a distinction. I, I, that, so, are we that's the, a misnomer. Uh, you know, that's a no, Hold on, hold on. Yeah, hold on, Mac. Let we right. let, let we don't respond. I I got to bring him on in though. Yeah, we You can respond, but I got to bring him on in. Okay. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> See, we he talking about plural four, but what he don't understand, we talking about the Most High host. That when he said that all his spirit that does the will or what he desire, this was talking about wisdom. What you don't understand, because you talking about us, right? Let me show you uh, Proverbs 8, right? Watch this. It says, do not wisdom cry and understand and put forth her voice. She standeth in the top of the high places by the way in the place of the path. She cries at the gates, at the trial of the city, at the coming in, at the door, unto you, O men, I call, and my voice to the sons of men. O oh, ye simple, understand wisdom, and ye fools, be ye of an understanding heart. Herefore, I will speak of excellent things, and the openness of my lips shall be right things. For my mouth shall speak truth, and wickedness is an abomination unto my lips. All the words of my mouth are righteousness. There is nothing for or perverse in them. They are all plain to him that understand the right to them that find knowledge. Receive instruction in my silver and knowledge rather than choice God. For wisdom is better than uh, rubies, and all the things that may be desired are not to be compared to it. I, wisdom, dwell in the province and find out knowledge of witty inventions. The fear, I'm going to get to the point, but I just want to read down and let you know where I'm at. I, wisdom, dwell with uh, prudence and find out knowledge of witty inventions. The fear of the Most High is to hate evil, pride and arrogance in an evil way, and a four mouth do I hate. Counsel is mine, and sound wisdom I am understanding. I have strength. Be me kings reign, and princes decree justice by the prince rules and nobles, even of the judge of the earth. 
I love them that love me, and those that seek me early shall find me. Riches and honor are with me, ye doable riches and righteousness. My fruit is better than gold. Ye shall find gold, and my revenue is of choice silver. I lead in the way of righteousness in the midst of the path of judges, that I may cause those that love me to inherit substance, and I will fill their treasures. Watch this. He said, the most I possess me in the beginning of his ways. Before his works of old, I was set up from everlasting, from the beginning or ever the earth was. When there was no depths, I was brought forth. When there was no fountains abounding with water, before the mountains were settled, before the hills was I brought forth. And this talking about the spirit of wisdom. This ain't talking about no Christ. This talking about wisdom. So when y'all tells you about all this, hold on. Y'all tells you about all the spirit. When he say, "I am the Most High of Hosts," what comes from his mouth, they does his will. And this is what he was talking about spirit. This thing had nothing to do with no okay. Christ. So by your own admission. There was multiple spirits in the beginning that God is talking with. So there's the spirit of God, I mean, and now you're saying the spirit of wisdom was there too, right? I mean, but you're 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 equating that to a Trinity, and that would just be a misnomer. Considering no, 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 that I ain't even dealing with Trinity. I'm not dealing with Trinity right now. I'm asking based off what he just said. He's saying uh-huh. God is in the beginning. And the spirit of wisdom, and that's who God was talking to in First Corinthians one. I mean, in Genesis one twenty six. That's what he's saying. That's what exactly I'm talking about. The spirit of wisdom, most definitely. Okay, so by your own admission, by what you just said, even in the beginning, because that's why I wanted to keep reading. It said God said, "Let us make man in our image, after our likeness." But then in the next verse, it says, "God created man in His own image." Not our image, but his image. So how does it go from plural to singular? And you're saying we were made in the image of not just God, but the spirit of wisdom, too. Hold that thought, hold that. Hold that thought, hold that thought, hold that thought, hold that thought, hold that thought. Hold that thought, hold that Hold on, we got to bring Amayana in. Amayana. I know it's been hard to get in here. The testosterone levels are rising. Yeah, and um, by the way, we uh, we got somebody on the line. They said they got one question for you. A six five, stay right there. After Amayan say his piece, I'm gonna let you bring out your question. All right, but well, Amayan, okay. go ahead, bro. All right, all right. Uh, Shalom, Sal. Shalom, Mac. Uh, Weeda. Uh, How you doing, Amayan? How, you, how your brothers doing? How your brothers doing? All right. What's going on, uh, Weeda? What's going on, um, Weeda? I mean, I I think you cut yourself when you read um, Proverbs chapter eight. <laughs> about the spirit of wisdom being there, present. Um, I think Brother Jay was alluding to 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 24, where it talks about Christ is the wisdom of God, which would then prove that he was there in the beginning. As he said, as you read in Proverbs mm-hmm. chapter 8, I want to read 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 24. Um, it says, But unto them which are called both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God. So right here we have confirmation that Christ is the wisdom of God, and now we confirm that he was there in the beginning, as you was reading there in Proverbs chapter 8, that that was him that was there, proving what Brother Jay is saying. Um, I don't want to be long-winded. I can say more, but I, I want to let you guys go back into it again. But I can prove also that the Messiah was there in the Old Covenant as well. When you read Isaiah chapter 62, verse 11, talks about the Messiah. He was there. His name is mentioned verbatim that he was there in the Old Covenant, and I'll leave it there for now. Right. All right, hold up, Weed. I know you want to respond to all that. Okay. Let me let this caller, uh, he called in, hold up, 865. 865, you say you got a question for Weed, all right? One question, go ahead. All right, Uh, this is Brother Israel. Weed, who is the Yes, how are you doing? I'm blessed. Hallelujah. Who is the Aleph in the Tau that's in Bereshit chapter 1? And who, have, who is throughout the whole of the, uh, the Tanakh and the scripture? But that I say, Shalom. Okay. okay, you say, who is the one in Genesis 1? 
the Aleph and the Tau that's not translated in the in the, the what you probably use the KJV Bible. It's not translated okay. in none of our English renditions. It's the Aleph and the Tau that's in the, um, the whole of the scripture. The whole of the scripture. Well, the the most high is up in Genesis and Genesis the first chapter. Is that what you're talking about? Go research it, Doc. Shalom Aleikum. <laughs> no, he said Shalom Aleikum. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Check this out. Let me go with this, right? Because, see, this is what I want to say. We got different interpretation and different understanding, right? Because, see, when he talking about let us make men in our own image, right, but he don't understand what the image is being formed, and we ain't talking about far as all. We saying what, the black man and so forth, right? But check this out. When you talking about the image of man, we talking about how the most high operate. Now, we know in Genesis 1 that the most high created the earth six days and he rested seven, right? And this is what we did our Sabbath. Y'all even commanded and told men that they will work six days and rest on the Sabbath, the same way as the Most High did in Genesis 1. The Most High worked it six days, and he rested seven. You see what I'm saying? Yep. So, yeah. Let me, uh, this is, go no, I'm ahead. Sorry about that. I'm going to let you finish, but uh, after that, pass the mic. You know, pass the mic around, y'all. Go ahead. Okay, okay. See, this is what people don't fail to realize when we're talking about the image and he said, let us make man in his image, right? Because, see, the thing is, we also know that the Most High is the creator of all things, and he rules the heavens and the earth, right? And then he told Adam, he said, let him have dominion over all the creatures and over all the fowls of the earth, the same as the Most High does on the entire world. And this is what we're talking about, image. The same way that the Most High rules the entire world, we talking about men was the rule in the same manner of the Most High. You see what I'm saying? So when you talk about image, we talking about in a, in a system of how the Most High created the earth six days and rested Sabbath, and he gave us six days of work, and we was the rest Sabbath. He told us that we were supposed to have dominion, of the whole entire world. You see what I'm saying? Just like the Most High is the creator, and he has dominion over the whole entire universe. That's what you don't understand about the image. you talking about a shape of form. Uh, well, see, but well they, God that, that created us gave us a shape and a form, and, and what I'm trying to get into is that he himself took on shape and form. With ooh. Oh, that hurt. That hurt. He See, said, I don't he think I, 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 it, it doesn't. It wouldn't make sense for us to. Uh, it wouldn't make sense for us to look at Adam and not think that when the Most High created Adam, that it wasn't in purpose. In, uh, there, there was, there was not the purpose in mind for us to see that there had to be somebody. The same way how he created Adam, there had to be somebody in the likeness of man to do what Adam could not, and that was to remain righteous and remain faithful to the Most High. That's exactly why we see in uh, in Mashali Proverbs uh, chapter thirty, where it says, um, uh, "Where um, actually, let me go there so I don't butcher it." Um, I'm going the wrong way. Okay, when we see in Mashali, uh chapter 30, and it says, uh, verse 1, it says, The words of Agor, son of, of, of Yaka, a message this man declared to Ithiel, to Ithiel and you call, and for I am more stupid than anyone and do not have the understanding of a man, and I have not learned wisdom, that I should know the knowledge of the Kadush one, or the uh, set-apart one, who has gone up the Shamayim and, con- and come down, who has gathered the wind in his fist, who has bound the waters in, in, uh, in a garment, 
who established all the ends of the earth. What is his name, and what is the name of his Ben, his son, if you know? So if 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 Agor, son of Yaka, is talking about the Most High, he's saying, who has done this, and who has gathered the winds in his hands, who has uh uh, who who has done these attributes, and he's saying that he has a son. Where is his son? Where mm-hmm. is he getting this constant from? Mm-hmm. Because they had to have like this, and they had to have some understanding of who that person was, or that some some person of existence was like that, was coming. Well, I, I'm going to say this, right? The, the, the most high is, to me, is forefront that when he came and he talked about his covenant, he references people where we see there's a covenant made with Abraham, there's a covenant made with Jacob, there's a covenant made with Isaac, there's a covenant made with the Levites or Aaron, and there's a covenant made with David. (laughs) So the thing is, let me ask you this as far as the son. I want to know through testimony. And law, where we say that who did the most high say who his son was? Because, see, I'm. All right, we got to call this drop. Yeah, it's called this drop. So uh, we'll bring him back in, but anybody can talk. Ahead. Anybody? Mm-hmm. All right. Um, well, for those listening, um, in, in the Aramaic targets in, Jer- in Genesis 1, in 27, it said, God created man. It says, the word of the Lord created man. The word of the Lord created man. So my, when he comes back, my question to him would be, who's the word of the Lord that created man? Because this can't be a thought. This has got to be so because the, the scripture says God formed man from the dust of the ground. So who was this one that was forming man? Uh, not only that, but in terms of he's asking, like, where is this, I guess, this proof in the Old Testament about the son, we have the testimony of, of, of Abraham. He quoted it earlier. He just didn't go further into the story. But when the Lord told Abraham to go and sacrifice Isaac, there's a conversation that takes place between Abraham and Isaac. And Isaac looks to his father and says, Father, which Isaac, by the way, the seed of promise, is has a, a, a conversation with his father. And says, Father, we have the stones, we have the wood and fire, but where's the ra- where's the lamb for the sacrifice? And Abraham said, prophesying and speaking of faith, he said, Son, the Lord Himself will provide the lamb. Now mm-hmm. we know later on the story, the Lord provided a ram in the bush, but that was all a foreshadow of Christ, who was in the bosom of the Father, as the Scripture says, and whom He sent down into earth, wrapped in flesh, to pour out His soul, as Isaiah said. For the sins of many So we have many testimonies in the Old Testament Concerning Christ uh, And who he is And not only that but in Isaiah I'll read this before you jump back in uh, I'll I'll back in. Back. in Zechariah chapter 12 The Lord said this And I will pour okay. out this was 10. He says and I will pour out on the house of David And the inhabitants of Jerusalem A spirit of grace And supplication They will look on me now, God is spirit. No one has seen his form. But yet he said, they will look on me, the one they have pierced. Can you pierce a spirit? You can't pierce a spirit. So how is Yahweh, because that's who's talking here, saying, they will look on me, whom they have pierced. And they will, and watch how he switches, how the prophet switches the language. It goes from personal, you, they will look upon me, who they appear, but then say, and they will mourn for him, as if this is some distinct other person. They will, they will mourn for him, as one born, mourns for an only child, and grieve bitterly for him, as one grieves for a firstborn son. So okay. Yahweh says, they will look on me, who they appear, and say, they will mourn for him. We mean him. The word of God, who was with God, who is God, that took on flesh. That's who they okay. look upon. Okay. Let me, let, me say, let me say this. For one, God, God has never came down in flesh. Never. 
that's what that's another thing that you missing. Cause when it came down to Exodus thirty three and you read seventeen to twenty one, he told Moses, if you was to gaze upon my face, that you would die. He showed right. Mo- Moses an image of him in the cleft of a rock. And you mean to tell me all of a sudden, now you're talking about coming down as a man and naming himself Christ. You see what I'm saying? So the whole the thing is... Oh, no, no. That ain't what... No, no. I'm going to tell you what the prophets say. They speak thus saith the Most High. You see what I'm yeah, saying? No. We, 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 we ain't talking about the will of men. So when you say okay. his firstborn son... Hold on, hold on. Let me finish. I'll let you talk. All right, go ahead. Right? Go ahead. Now, I'm saying again, I'm going to ask you that question one more again. All right. Who is the son that the Most High claimed to be his in the Old Testament? Because, see, I'm going to just say this one thing I'm going to tell you about me. I don't accept the New Testament. I don't like reading from it. It does not validate the Old Testament. And if you ever, Brother Jack, you could debate me. And I'm going to tell you this, how I get out. I will pull right. out every contradiction and every plagiarism of that New Testament and how it falsifies information from the Old Testament. I'm telling you that. The book is plagiarism. It don't got nothing to do with our book. So you want to sit back okay. and talk about the song. Hold on. Let me finish this again. Now, ask my question. Who is the son that the Most High claimed to be his? That he mentioned them by name. Well, if, if we're going to be technical, I I brought something up that you didn't even address. You want to just ask me to keep asking questions? I got off the phone. My phone had went off. I just got no, my no, phone. You were back already. You were back already. I, said, I, I told you I didn't hear the question. question. I just told you I didn't hear the no, question. No, no, no. Okay. Well, let me re-ask it again. In Zechariah 12, verse 10, when Yahweh says, they will look upon me whom they mm-hmm. have pierced. And they will mourn for him. Him is a, mm-hmm. is a pronoun for an actual person, a gender. Mourn for him as one mourns for an only child. Now, your testimony is that God never came down in flesh. You said never, mm-hmm. even though you're only what? How old are you, 30, 40, 20 something? I do. I'm 46 years old. I'm an elder. Right, so you're 46 years old, and the earth's been around longer than you. But you're making okay. a statement that he's never come in the flesh. You only been around. Right, hold, hold on, so, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Is Zechariah a question? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Is, yeah, good. Yeah, eight six five. Hold up, hold up, brother Jay. Brother Jay, I got you. Oh, okay. Uh, eight six five. You want to say something? Go ahead, brother. Yes, absolutely. I want to pose uh, Jay this question. Can you read Jeremiah fifty one and verse thirty five, please? Because this is another reference to Yahuwah speaking about his flesh. Tell me who this flesh is, please. Uh, give me a quick. You said Jeremiah 51, what? 35. Uh, let me get to it here. And make sure y'all share the mic, y'all. Share the mic. <laughs> Look at <that. laughs> All right. Uh, Jeremiah 51, 35. No, I'll start at 34, I guess. 30, uh, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, has devoured me. He has crushed me. He has set me, set me aside like an empty vessel. He has swallowed me like a monster. He fills his belly with uh, my uh, uh, jealousy and vomited me out. Made a violence, made a violence done to me and to my flesh be upon Babylon, says the inhabitant of Zion. May my blood be on the inhabitants of Chaldea, says Jerusalem. I was question now. What's the significance of this flesh? Who's talking? Is that Jerusalem or? Is that... But this is talking about. But this is talking about the persecution of the people of the land, the inhabitants, and what was done to Jerusalem when Nebuchadnezzar, uh, Nebuchadnezzar took them and the other nations into captivity. All right, all right. But Jerusalem from above is free, right? Yeah, from above the New Jerusalem. Yeah. All right, all right, but. That's Jerusalem is a replication of that one, which is free. Now, what I want to ask you huh? is Jerusalem okay, divine. Yeah. It's Jerusalem divine. The Jerusalem now is or the one above that is free? 
the one that's coming to the earth, the one that um, the believers in Mashiach are going to be a part of. Yeah, that yes, that new Jerusalem. Yeah, come down from God. So that's a yeah. that's a divine Jerusalem. So would that be a deity? No, this is not a god. This is some uh, Jerusalem or the city of peace or righteousness coming down where on earth where righteousness will reign for eternity. Yeah. Okay. All right, let's let uh let's bring let's bring Amiyan back in. You've been quiet, Amiyan. Go ahead, man. <laughs> hey, well, hey, Sal, let me ask you the Zechariah twelve question, bro, before we go left. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so in Zechariah twelve, Yahweh said, Yahweh said they will look on me in whom they have pierced, and they will mourn for him as one mourns for an only child. My question is, you made a statement earlier, which I agree with, that no one has seen the father and lived. So how is it these people will look upon him? If they can't look upon him, because the scripture says they're unapproachable life. So if in his truest deity is formed, men in their flesh can't look upon him and live. But yet they're saying, he's saying here, these men of flesh will look upon him in whom they pierced, meaning they've mm-hmm. really done something to him. So who is he talking about here? Okay. I'm, I'm going to say this, right? Because I read up in Hosea 3 and 5, it says David is to return, right? So when you're talking about Psalms 22, when you're talking about the piercing, we talking about the atrocities what David went through. The atrocities that yeah. David, hold on, I, I'm asking your question. That person I'm saying is David. So you're saying David is Yahweh? Hold on, dude. Now, I don't do no Trinity what you do. No, I don't no. do no Trinity. He said, Yahweh said he, they would look on him, but you're saying that's talking about David. Hold on. Let me tell you something, what you don't get. Because, see, you got a mouthful of confusion going on right here. No, it ain't. Because, you, 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 you don't know the you confused. Hold on. Let me say this. Let me say say this, right? Check this out. I'm going to say this. When it came down to the scriptures, when we look up in here, we see the most high, the creator. He said, Samuel, the choose a king, because he said that the people would not accept him. He sent Samuel to Saul, and Saul was the first king over Israel. Now, when yeah. Saul did, so what Saul did wrong, because see, what you don't understand is who the Most High chooses. We ain't talking about God coming down as a physical being. We talking about who he chooses. Who he chooses. So, on, Jay, he chooses. so uh, I said, my answer to you it was David who was pierced. Now, my question to you is who is the most high son that he mentioned them by name according to God, the old covenant? God has many sons. It's three of them. It's three of them. Hold on. Come on. Can you ask my question? Hold on. Hold on, Weedah. Let him answer that. Let him answer that. It, and then Adam, we, Adam we got to let somebody else join in. David, God has many sons, but we're talking about the begot, only begotten son. And, and Yahweh said, they will look on me whom they pierced. Me, him, Yahweh. But you're saying it's David that was pierced. Hello. So by your own uh, blasphemy, you're saying that David, a sinner, is Yahweh. <laughs> uh, hold on, David, Weedah, hold on, Weedah. Hold on, Weedah. I got to let somebody else join in. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm a young guy, man. That, yeah, I'm a young. You can join in. Yeah. All right. All right. Thank you. All right. All right. Thank you, sir. I want to see can I answer Weedah's question here about um, who the son of the Most High is, because I know he's, he's, he's trying to reference um, Exodus chapter 4, verse 22, speaking, speaking of an entire nation of people, speaking of Israel is my son, speaking of an entire nation, but we're more speaking of an individual um, in the book of Hosea, chapter 11, I want to read this. Um, it says, when Israel was a child, uh, then I loved him and called my son out of Egypt. Okay? So now people have interpreted this verse here to be talking about when Moses went down into Egypt and got Israel out of there. This verse, according to Hosea, he's saying he called his son out of Egypt. And I've asked the question plenty of times. Show it to me in the old. Show it to me in Exodus anywhere where that was a call. Now I want to read okay. what the Most High said it was specifically. 
Let me read that Exodus right quick to show you, because I want you to show me two scriptures that that was a call. Because Hosea is saying here, he called his son out of Egypt, okay? I want to read Exodus chapter 3, verse 7 and 8, where the Most High said what he's going to do, what, what that was there. Exodus chapter 3, and I want to read verse 7 and verse 8. Exodus chapter 3, verse 7, it says, And thus saith the Lord, I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt, and have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows, and, I'm, and I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians, and to bring them up out of that land into a good land, and a large unto a land flowing with milk and honey, unto a place of the Canaanites. So he clearly says he, he came down to deliver them. They, that was not a call. Israel was not called out of Egypt when, when, when Moses went down here. But Hosea is saying that he called his son out of Egypt. So can you show me anywhere in the, in, in the Torah where that was a call when Moses went down there for, for Israel? Okay, let me say this. For one, I wasn't talking about Exodus 4.22. That's why you you uh, misinterpret my words because you assume it, right? I'm I'm telling you this, right? Now, here goes what I'm talking about. This is Psalms 89, and I'm gonna read 20 all the way to 27. This is what I was talking about, cause you gonna assume and say I said something. Okay, it says in verse 20, he said, I have found David, my servant, with my holy oil, have I anointed him, with whom my hand shall be established. My arm also shall strengthen him. The enemy shall not exact upon him, nor the sons of wickedness afflict him, and I will beat down his foes before his face and plague them that hate him. But my faithfulness and my mercy shall be with him, and in my name shall his horn be exalted. I will set his hand also in the sea and his right hand in the river. He shall cry unto me, Thou art my father, my God, and the rock of my salvation. Also, I will make him my firstborn higher than the kings of the earth. My mercy will I keep for him forevermore, and my covenant shall stand fast with him. His seed also will I make to endure forever, and his throne as the days of heaven. If his children will forsake my laws and walk not in my judgment, if they break my statutes and keep not my commandments, then will I visit their transgression with the rod and their iniquity with stripes. This is who I was talking about. I wasn't talking about Exodus 4 and 22. He said, David would be called my firstborn. And he called him and he mentioned them by name. That's who I was talking about. Okay, but Rita, and, and, and you, you, you have not, what Rita, you have not answered my question, though. That I know, I know. You. you know what? I know. This is what I'm saying to you. Again, you assume and said I was talking about Exodus 4 and 22. Did you not? I said, I said, I uh, okay, think you're. Re- I, I said, I think you're referring to that. I didn't say that you was for sure. I said, I think you might be referring to Exodus four twenty two. I didn't say for sure you was. I said, I think you might be. That's what I said. So what made you go to Exodus four and twenty two and assume that I was making that because reference? Because he thought. I mean, because he because thought. Because you asked the question he, about he, who the son of the Most High was. So it says right there, Israel is right. my son. So I'm saying, I said, I think you might be referencing that scripture. I didn't say you was for sure. That's what I said. But you're still answering okay. my question. Okay. Show me where, when Moses went down, that that was a call, according to Scripture. Show me that. What you, what, what, so can you explain what you mentioned about the call? What are you talking about? In Hosea I mean, chapter 11, it, the, Hosea the prophet is saying that when Israel was a child, I loved him, and I called my son out of Egypt, it says, right? Mm-hmm. I, I read in Exodus chapter 3, verse 7 and 8, where the Most High said, I have come down to deliver them from mm-hmm. the Egyptians, Okay. You you cannot but, call nobody out of out of captivity. You have to go deliver them, right? He you must used be Moses to deliver them, right? So used, so 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 that wasn't a call. He didn't call them out of Egypt. It wasn't a call, okay? But yet we read in Hosea. Hosea is saying that I called my son out of Egypt. 
So what 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 what, what we are saying, what we are saying as messianics, according to what Matthew quote Matthew quote this in Matthew chapter two verse fifteen, that when Christ was a baby and he went down into Egypt, he called he called him back into the land to the angel. So Matthew was saying that that was fulfilled in the Messiah, proving that that that's the Most High Son, because when Moses went down there, that wasn't a call. It would, it, it would only fit the Messiah when he was young and went down into Egypt, and he was called out of Egypt. So that would prove that the Messiah is the Most High Son, according to Hosea chapter 11. Okay. This, this is what I want to say to you again, and I'm going to say to all you Messianics on this platform. I do not validate the uh, New Testament as our book. And see, everything what you read according to the New Testament, it contradicts everything what's being mentioned and the Old Testament, just like when he, uh, Christ said that he was the one, he was the bread that came down t- to the earth, he said Moses did not feed them the man of bread. Now it's contradicting Exodus 16 where Yah told Moses to give Israel the man of bread. This is what you don't understand. So when he said we are, called, can, can you answer my question, though? Hold on, I'm going to tell you again. I, you answered your question. He said when he called them out of Egypt, he used Moses to deliver them. That's it. That's all that needs to be said. How did it need to be said? That, that wasn't a call. That's the point. Uh, I, hold on. That ain't no point. Mm-hmm. And if you want to so debate me, I, hold on. I'm on you. Do you want to debate me? Debate you on what, bro? I right, check this out. What you want to get at a topic at since we want to go here? Because we trying brother, to we brother, I'm, Weida, I'm asking you a simple question, Weida. Jose is saying that he called his son out of Egypt. I'm asking you, show me in the Torah where when Moses went down there, that, that was a call. That's all I'm asking you to hold show on. that. Okay, hold on. He, you, didn't he use, okay, this is what he said. Exodus, let's go to Exodus 4. I, I'm going to just read who was the person that he used to deliver Israel out of Egypt. Now, if you can't validate this, <coughs> Exodus 4. I'm going to go right here. And verse 4. Let me see in chapter 4. Moses answered and said, But behold, they will not believe me nor hearken unto my voice, for they will say, We can go to chapter 3. Right? And this is why he's using Moses to uh, bring Israel out of Egypt. Because, see, I keep on telling you, this was a that New Testament contradicts everything. It says now the Moses kept the flock of Jethro and the father in law the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of Yah, even to or uh, to Hor. And the angel of the Most High appeared unto him in the flame of fire out of the midst of the bush, and he looked. And behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. And Moses, who said, I will now turn aside and see this great light by the bush is not burnt. And when the Most High saw that he turned aside to see, Yah called unto him. Yah called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses, he said, here I am. It's Yah who called out to Moses. Not J.C., but Moses. And he so, said, draw, draw not nigh, hither put off thy shoes from off thy feet, for the place where else I stand is holy. We see the Most High is, is speaking to Moses. But you finna say you go up into Matthew Matthew two, then which is not our book, and he gonna tell you he didn't call out to him. Well, I'm asking you to say, prove it. Where you you you're not, you, but Rita, you're not really know where here where that was a call. I, he just said he called out to Moses. He well, that that's not Israel. He said I called my son out of Egypt. That be referring to Israel, according to what okay. you're saying. When he called out to Israel is what he used Moses to deliver Israel out of Egypt. Did he or did he That not? was a deliverance then. That was a deliverance. That was not a call. Dude, hold on. All right, hold on. Check this out. Was, this, this was the whole confusion with you because you, you like Gideon. 
Y'all brain work and don't know what. And this only thing I'm saying, when he say he called Israel out of Egypt, he had a deliverer to bring them out. That's what he did. Okay, so 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 that so that wasn't a call at the time of Moses then. It wasn't a call, it was a deliverance. So now when, when Hosea is saying, I called my son out of Egypt, it can refer to the nation back in, back in Exodus. It must refer to something future, which that would mean it would, it, would, it would apply to the Messiah that came in the first century, because when he was young, he went down into Egypt, and he was called out of Egypt. So Hosea is going forward, not back. No, he's not. He's, he's referring to the testimony of the <laughs> Exodus. That all got nothing to do with no future. He spoke okay, about prove something that, that had it. Prove that was a call then. Show it in the Bible. Hold on, 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 when he read in Psalms, and it talked about the oath that God made to David and his seed. The same mm-hmm. thing that took place in Psalm 132, where it says in verse 11, The Lord has sworn in truth to David, he will not turn from it. I will set upon your throne the fruit of your body. Mm-hmm. Come on, the seed of David. Not right. David himself, but mm-hmm. the seed of David. And so that seed of David, what we're trying to tell you, and what we want to show you, and what we're trying to show you, but we'll get to that later. <laughs> that seed of David is the Messiah, is Christ, Jesus, Jesus Christ or Yeshua of Nazareth. That's who the seed of David is according to the word of promise. So that's what we're talking about with Hosea, because calling, uh, calling, you know, calling uh, uh, Moses to the bush so he can hear a message is not calling literally Israel out of Egypt. So in your explanation, you got this kind of like three-way thing going where God don't call Israel out of Egypt. He calls Moses to the bush and just sends Moses to go deliver Egypt, uh, deliver Israel out of Egypt, whereas we're showing you the record in the testimony of the apostles where God literally called actual Christ, whose name is Israel, because by the way, that name Israel came from God. That wasn't an earthly <laughs> name. That was a name God himself placed upon Jacob. So that name is a heavenly name that came from God himself. That name is one of Christ's names. That's why Hosea says that, and that's why the Matthew attributes that fulfillment to Christ. Who is that Isaiah, to Israel? Isaiah 44 5, right? He's talking about, oh, that, that name is affiliated to Christ, right? Here go a prophecy right here. It says, yet now I hear, O Jacob, my servant, and Israel whom I have chosen, thus said the Most okay. High, that may be informed thee from the world which will help thee. Fear not, O Jacob, because I'm, I'm taking my time since you say I read fast. My servant, and thou, Jeshua, whom I have chosen. Jeshua is the word upright. For I will pour water upon him that is thirsty and flood upon the dry ground. I will pour my spirit upon thy seed. He says seed. And my blessing okay. upon thy offspring. And they shall yeah. spring up as among the grass, as willow by the waters of course. One shall say, I am the most high. And another shall call himself by the name of Jacob. And another shall subscribe with his hand unto the most high and surname himself by the name of Israel. So you went alive and said Israel belongs to the name of Christ. And he just read down here and said that he was surname himself Israel. You just went alive. What? You are blasphemy. You are you blasphemy. You did not hear what I just said. I said you just, that, name Israel, the, that name Israel came from God. It's a heavenly name yeah. that was placed upon Jacob. And his seed that came out of his loins was called Israelite because of that name God coined him with. What I'm telling you is that name Israel was with God before it was with Jacob. I and understand God that. So my point is, Jesus Christ, who was before Israel, before Jacob, that name came from him. That's what I'm telling you. 
Hey, Jesus Christ never existed, though. Never. He's never been well, around. That's in your mind. Well, he did. Well, he did. And, <laughs> All right, look, look. And you, look, look. And you, you, you talk a lot, bro. You talk a lot. No, no, no. You talk a lot. You talk a lot. All right, come on now. Bring it down. Yahweh said, Yahweh said they will look upon me who he appeared. And you said that was David. You lost all credibility with me because you, uh, you committed want... blasphemy talking about David a sinner. Is Yahweh. You... Okay. I'll, 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 you, Go ahead. You gotta, Go ahead. No, no, no. I, I, I'll say this. Um, you got a point there, Wida. You, you, can't, you can't say that it's talking about David and Zechariah. Excuse me. Which um, you, you can't say that that's David, which is being talked about in Zechariah, which Zechariah is after David. For one, okay, and two, it, it switches. It switches who it's talking about. So it's like when it start. It starts out with Yah. So if Yah says they will look upon me, whom they have pierced, if it starts out with him, and then he switches back and said, uh, actually, you know, brother Jay, can you actually just read the scripture, and and, and uh, I'll tell you when to stop. Okay. Uh, so Zechariah twelve. Uh, it says, and I will pour out in the house of David and the inhabitants of Jerusalem a spirit of grace and supplication. They will look on me, the one they have pierced. Okay, so the person who's pouring out this spirit, the, 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 the person who's pouring out this spirit has to be the most high. He's the only one who could pour out a spirit of grace. Well, okay, that's true. So this person, <laughs> he's, I'm he's pouring with you. it I'm out. I'm agreeing with you. Okay, so who? How is he, okay? So when he says they will look upon me whom they have pierced, how did we pierce, or how did how does that translate to you piercing David? Okay, how? this how this is how that uh, appears. What we talking about? We talking about the afflictions of what David did. Cause see, if you don't understand the story. What took place with David after he went and slept with uh, Uriah's wife? Y'all end up cursing his whole house. Now, we see that through the stories what David went through, the atrocities where he had Joab turned against him. He had his sons that was trying to kill him, Absalom, who was one of his sons. We see why Shammai, who hated David, because of the fact that Shammai comes from the tribe of Benjamin, and he was from the house of Saul. So you see, when he said, uh, when, Sh- when Shammai threw the stone, let me see you first Samuel 16. No, nah, yeah, 16, 10 through 12. You see what I'm saying? See, the thing what you don't understand, you saw about it's after David, right? But see, the thing what we're talking about, we're talking about this book talk about past, future and present events that's now to come and hereafter. And it do mention things about past events what took place. That's what you don't understand. Even though Zachariah was around him, Zachariah is prophesied. And it's talking about something that happened in the past time that we will see in the future. That's what it's talking about. So okay. we will go through the whole book of Second Samuel and talk about all the events of what David went through. If you want to read that, even from him fleeing from Saul from First Samuel 16 all the way through 31. You see what I'm well, saying? Well, I agree that David went through affliction. But what we're trying to point out I'm is, reading. I don't know if you're looking at it as we're reading it, but it says, Yahweh says, they will look on me, the one they pierced. He didn't say mm-hmm. they will look upon David. He said me. So my question to you is, who's the me there? I just told you that. Why would I keep on asking you? You keep uh, on so, so saying the same thing. So I need David. I'm not going to answer that again. I answered it three times. So the uh, thing well, is, how, three times. okay. Hold on. Let me ask a question. Now let me say you said okay. Christ supposed to be from the tribe of Judah. Is he not? Right. So yes, Christ is from the tribe of Judah, yes. Okay, he's from the seed of David. Yeah. Okay, you show me in First Chronicles, <laughs> the third chapter. Show me in First Chronicles, in the third chapter, where you can find anything, any Christ name mentioned in First Chronicles. Because, see, I'm telling you, 
Y'all always you mean, mention his name. What do you mean by that? Okay, this is what I mean. In First Chronicles three, David mentioned He's talking about how the genealogy is not the, the genealogy. That's what I'm talking about. So you That's said what getting at. that that Christ is from the seed of, of David. Show me yes. according to the uh, testimony in First Chronicles three what Christ is mentioned as being a part of the seed of David. Because then you got to deal with the Hold thing here. Chronicles, you don't go to Chronicles to try to find Christ. <laughs> you need to go uh, for in time where there was more descendants to find nah, Christ. No, you don't. No, nah, no. Nah. The whole, the you whole family line no, was you don't. No, you don't. Right? I'm not hearing that. Because the thing is, what? the New Testament always going to reference the Old Testament Therefore, when it references the Old Testament, the Old Testament becomes the source. So you got to go back to Not source. Not for genealogy, to, you because to, people are uh, again, Okay, where was one it? Time, that, one at a time, one at a okay, time. What I'm trying to say is, let's use, let's both use common sense. And when I don't use written, the common the sense. Hold on, hold on. When Chronicles was written with the genealogies, more descendants was born after that time. That's why genealogy is written again in Matthew and in Luke. <laughs> and Matthew and Luke, you don't even got him from the tribe of David. Because then it says he it's was supposed to mother. be a pro- oh, his, his, his father and okay. his mother. His father okay. and his mother is from the seed of David. And being that he's born of his mother, because him coming through Joseph's loins wouldn't be qualified for the throne because of the curse that was on <laughs> David's children. But it's through his you, mother. That he okay. on the throne. <laughs> but see, Numbers 1 and 18 said we claim our heritage through our fathers. So what you get? Not all at? the time. <laughs> no, you're you a lie. So you saying the most high is a lie? It's no, most high a lie. You, no, well, hold on. Not in that scripture, but in Deuteronomy, you have the law with uh, the brother's daughter. He had no son. All he had was daughter. And they went to the priest and they went to find out what they should do concerning their heritage. And it's written okay. in the law. That if a man, hold on, that if a man has no sons and only daughters, that the inheritance goes to the daughters, and they have to marry within their tribe so that the inheritances don't skip and skip over the tribe. So that okay, what, what, that, what do they got to do with the seed of, of David? We talk, you talking because about Mary, a heritage. Because, because Joseph and Mary is from the line of David. Mary, <laughs> being the only daughter of her father, the inheritance came promised came through her line, which qualified Christ for the throne. Okay, again. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Hold up. Let's let somebody else get some my time. Let's, okay. Yo. Hey, hey, I'm going to go up and again. How's that again, brother? Joe Jay? 14. Hold on, wait, 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 wait. I think I might have to run out in a little bit, uh, Sam. Oh, okay. Okay, Joe, I got you. Joe 14. Joe 14. A man that is born of a woman is a few days and full of trouble. He cometh forth like a flower and is cut down. He fleeth also as a shadow and continues not, and doeth not open thy eyes upon such as one, and bringeth me into judgment with thee. Who can bring a clean thing out of an unclean, not one? So he said a man coming from through, the, through a woman's loin is considered unclean. So what you mean that through Mary, that Christ is to sit on the throne with Numbers 1 and 18 stipulates that the seed comes through the, through the man. And if you read through every prophet, majority of the prophet is going to give you their genealogy through their father. You see what I'm saying? Once again. So, well, I know once what? again, nothing. You explain well, that yeah, verse yeah. right there. All on we though. Right. It, it, that one ain't even dealing with the birth of Christ, first of all. And who can make a clean it's thing not. out of unclean? God can. Not a man, but God can. And and number <laughs> one, because there's nothing impossible for God as it's written. But once again, in Genesis three, you have the first part concerning the Messiah, and it said that the seed of the woman will crush the serpent's head. The seed of the I, woman. I think I but, but I, 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 I think it, it's it's like it, it it's like you guys are talking past each other at this point. Honestly, it, yeah. With with a topic with with the topic, it, it doesn't make sense because it's like one is 
I, I, I'll say from my end. One is misinterpreting scripture, and the other doesn't understand Hebrew concepts. But both sides have just a misconception of scripture, and it's kind of like hurting the understanding. So it's it like for you, Brother Jay, it, it's not – some points I'm definitely agreeing with you there. It is, I, 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 I'm not denying the Mashiach, and I know that he came from the loins of the seed of uh, – uh, uh, excuse me, from the uh, – he came from the root of Jesse, out of the uh, um, out of the branch of David. I can't even say uh, say my words right. I don't know what's going on, but anyway, <laughs> um, we so we know the Mashiach comes from you know the seed of uh, David. We know that he comes from the stock of Yehuda. That's not debatable, honestly. It's not you, because the the concepts were already there, and that's why even the Pharisees understood that. That's why they understood that. So oh, okay. It, it's like it's not if the people wait a second, if the people who were already there, okay, understood that this man, Mashiach, was he said they said Hosanna, Hosanna, the seed of David. So they clearly knew what his lineage was. So whether you have it in your hands or not, whether you able to know it or not. These people were clearly there before you, and it was a multitude who said, Hosanna, Hosanna, the seed of David. And you could say that that's plagiarism all you want to. Right. And I'm going to keep on saying Hold on. Hold on. That's more than two or three witnesses against you. So unless you was going back at that time and you can say that that's not the case, then you have a lot to prove. Okay. Uh, Hold on. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah. Can you hear me? Uh, 512. Somebody, 512, can you hear me? 512 217, are you there? Uh, okay, they, they can't hear us. Look at Wida. Okay, Matthew 22, the Pharisees go right here. They said, while the Pharisees were gathered together, Christ asked them, saying, What think ye of Christ? Whose son is he? They asked the question. They said unto him, The son of David. He said unto them, how then do David in spirit call him, uh, I ain't going to say that word because I know what it represents, saying, saying the Most High said, he said that the L-O-R-D said unto L-O-R-D, sit down at my right hand till I make thy enemies thy footstool. If David did call himself the Most High, how is he the, his son? And no man was able to answer him a word, neither durst any man from that day forth ask him more questions. So you said that the Pharisees knew them, and they asked him a question which he never responded. So what you get what out of that? that? So, so wait a minute. So you're going to okay. say that because the Pharisees could not respond, Therefore, that takes away the validity of what he was talking about. Because you do oh, realize is. now, you hold on, hold on. You do okay. realize that the Mashiach came through the loins of David. So that would make Mashiach a descendant of David. But David okay. has to acknowledge that the Mashiach is greater and was before him. And he has to call him master. So that's the idea. It, it's like it's a... um. Um, what you call it? Um, there's a word that they use for it. It's some European word, whatever. Anyway, they, they, the fact that you are looking at a person who's come out of your loins, who's come out of your seed, and you're calling them master, and you're calling them uh, one who predated you. You're calling them your master, and you're calling them that they are the head over you. Does that make Stop sense? Up. Do, do it make sense? Let me show you what don't make sense. Because he just said that Mary, that Christ come out of the loins of Mary, saying something like that, because they come out of day, uh, Joseph or something like that. Her. But then we go to this. You're talking about Matthew 1 and 18. You're talking about a virgin birth. You see yeah. what I'm saying? You see how confused that is? But because you they're, both say, of no, the seat, they're both of the stock of David. You don't get that. You're, you're, you you're, don't, you're no, saying no. What you like don't that. get is your book is confusing. That's what you don't get. Because if you're going to sit up here and claim Matthew 118 is a virgin birth, 
That means, ooh, here it go, right here. Because you say you come from the seed of David, right? Watch this in John 1 and 13. Watch this. Because he's saying, oh, he come from the seed of David. Here we go. I'm going to read all the way. He's going to say, in the beginning, the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. The same was in the beginning of God. All things was made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. And here was life, and the life was the light of men, and the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended not. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. He was not the light, but was wit- but he was sent to bear witness of that light. That was a true light, which light every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received them, to them gave he power to become the Son of God, even to them that believed on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of flesh, nor of the will of men, but of God. But you just went and said he come from the seed of David, and he just said he what? got of flesh and blood. Did he, is, didn't we just okay. read what? that he's not that of flesh it. and blood? That is, uh, uh, okay, Brother Jay, I, I mean, I, I hate to say it. I, I don't hate to say this. Uh, do we have to team up on this nonsense? I, I don't, I don't I, understand you, what's you, happening. It would be I, a scene I, if we did. Right. He just said <laughs> he was not a flesh and blood. Because I'm confused. Uh, I'm confused on how we had. I, I'm confused on how we're reading something in English, and it's like we're supposed to be. Uh, and I'm speaking for you, uh, Weeda, because it, it's like beside Brother Jay. Uh, I mean, I'm not including Brother Jay in this one. You, Weeda, should have more of an understanding of the Hebrew concept than Brother Jay does. And yet you don't see that there's a problem in what you just said. You you no. don't see that when you read the, hold on, hold on. You don't see that when you're reading this book and when you're reading about John, when he's talking about the description, that he's clearly referencing the very beginning, but he's showing who was there in the beginning. And you're okay. not seeing that you're 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 not seeing that, oh, you know, what he's talking about does not make sense because we're talking about the carnal seed of David. How can he do that? And he was not huh. made by blood, nor by the will of man. That makes but no sense because he's not even talking about no, no. that. Let, let me say that something like this, G. You the one who said that he come from the seed of David. Uh, did you or did you not? It was like, prophesied yes no? that he would come from no, no, the seed no. of David. I answer the question. Why is it when we got to go through all this? I just asked a yes or no question. You did you or did you not say that he come from the seed of David? Yes, because the scripture okay, says that. Okay, stop. Doesn't it just not say that the man was not born of flesh and blood? Why does it, it say that? Talk about his birth. Uh, wow. I'm not talking to you, Jay. Uh, hold up, hold he up, said, hold up, hold up, hold up, y'all. Hold up. You only got like, <laughs> so yeah, I know, hold up. So yeah, I know we got like 10 minutes left in the air, y'all. We got 10 minutes left in yeah. the air. But I, I'm a young, you've been quiet. I'm a young guy, man. Come on, come on the floor. I know, Brother Jay, you got to go soon, right? You still got to go? Okay. Yeah, I got, yeah, man. Let me say this last thing, and I'll let y'all finish it off, man. I know that. Um, I'm going to have to peel out. But in, what you just read wasn't even addressing Christ's birth. It was addressing those that believed it? on him. Oh, 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 their oh, birth, their spiritual birth. Yeah, Brother Jay. That's what yeah. that was addressing. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, that's what that was addressing. That was addressing those that were born of God, that believed on Christ. That wasn't talking about Christ's birth. Talking about he wasn't of flesh. He was in flesh. Because in verse 14, it tells you, the word became flesh and made a dwelling among us, and we've seen his glory. So, yes, he came in flesh. But that verse you just read was not addressing his birth, but those that believed on him birth. Okay. They were born of God. Regeneration okay. that Ezekiel was talking about. But uh, well, let me tell you what you Hold on, 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 because the brother got to go. So, Brother Jay, that's it, right? That's your last word? You got to you gotta roll out? Yeah, that's my last word, man. Hey, appreciate it. I What's appreciate that? you coming on, man. I appreciate you, man. I, I got to let Amayan jump in, though. I mean, I got to jump in, bro. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you, Sal. Um, what 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 Weida is, is, is saying here, um, as far as I'm, I'm understanding it, this, 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 is, this is more forward speaking to the Messiah's virgin birth. As as he is saying, this is going on to his virgin birth. 
as as I'm understanding it. Um, that's what he's he's actually saying here. I I understand it the way Weida is understanding this thing that this thing is not this thing is speaking to the Messiah's uh, virgin birth that he didn't come through um, sperm. He didn't come through the the sperm of a man. He was he was immaculated uh, 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 conceived according to what is recorded in the Renewed Testament. That's what I understand this is saying here. So I'm in agreement with Weida when this thing is saying here that it that who is not uh, begotten uh, or born uh, of the will of the flesh or of the of uh, the blood of man. Uh, what it's saying here. So that's that that's my take on that. Okay. I, w- I want to make this statement. This is why I wanted to refer for uh, uh, Brother Jay, even though he's gone, right? So when we talk about the word being making flesh, right? Now, did Moses not write on the tablets all the law, statutes, and commandments? That was brought down from Mount Sinai, because if you really want to talk about the word, we talking about the laws, statutes, and commandment that was given to Moses, that was given to Israel. That's where if you talking about the word being making flesh, you see what I'm saying? That's my take on it. But see, like I say, you are gonna have a different understanding because the fact is, you read from another book than what I read from. You see what I'm saying? So the thing is, my, my, my question is, is why I don't understand is, right, we go from a virgin birth from Matthew 118, <laughs> then we go to Luke 3 and 23, that he was supposed to be from the son of Joseph. And then we go into uh, over here in Luke 1 and what, said 30, 35 or something, where we said that he was supposed to be from the seed of David. And this is the only thing where I'm saying why this book is so confusing because you got him being from a virgin birth to supposedly being from Joseph to him being from the seed of David. And y'all don't find nothing confusing about that. When you read in the scriptures about David, he said, now this is what he says that Christ come from the seed of uh, uh, Jesse was from uh, Jesse was the branch. So he claiming that Christ is from a part of Jesse. But if you read the book of Ruth, Ruth said that Jesse is the father and David is the son. He given a genealogy right there, and he mentioned him by name. David come from Jesse. He never said nothing about Christ, but we keep on drawing up this thing about Christ coming from the seed of David. And the only thing I'm saying is when the New Testament validates the Old Testament, give reference to the Old Testament, the Old Testament becomes the source. So as far as what Matt Thomas say, hey, you got your opinion, I got mine. I'm not tripping on that. But I'm going to tell you like this. I'm not never scared to debate nobody. And I'm telling you, I will put any one of y'all on the line that if we was try to go to the validity to this book, we could find whatever topic we want to find and we could get out. So I'm just saying with y'all three, Brother Jay, he could come back over there, let me know when you want to debate me. Mac Thomas, let me know when you want to debate me. I'm a young, we done debated twice. You could still debate me. I have no problem with it. I have no problem with this. All right, hey, hey, don't, don't, I'll forget be quiet. That, don't forget that you, yeah, yeah, you lost twice too as well. Put that oh, in there as well. Oh, oh, <laughs> you oh, lost I, twice I, too I, as well. I, I, oh, 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 right. oh, hold on, let me there. say. I, oh, let's put, let me put this in there because I'm sitting there say say this, right? I won <laughs> the debate. Who was the Messiah to come on Saul of Vision? Saul of Mine. the debate. No, you want to go back? It's recorded. We could go show it. You want to lie? You want to lie? Brother, when you, when, you when, want, listen, let me, I, let me say want, this. Let, let me say this. When you, have, when, 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 when you have judges that don't understand the Old Testament <laughs> and they're voting based
information, a lack of understanding of the Old Testament, how can you call it a victory? If we go to information, you clearly lost because I show up to a timeline that the Messiah was to come in the first century, according to Daniels. I'm, you lost right a long time ago. I, I walk all over you with all these scriptures. It's in my head and it's up in this book. And I'm going to tell you again, I will get down on you in another debate. I will walk so all up, over up. you. <laughs> So hold up, Osolomon Debate League, Osolomon Debate League, you beat, you beat Amaya? Most definitely I did. I no, so he did, did not beat me. Uh, hold on, he did not beat me. Hold on, Sal, Sal, they had, they, they, Sal, they, they had judges on here, they had people on there that don't understand the Old Testament who <laughs> cast a vote based on lack of understanding of the Old Testament. If 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 we are debating if we are debating the Messiah to come simply and I, I gave you a timeline according to Daniel when he must come, which brings you to the to the to the to the first century and he's saying and he's saying that it's supposed to be in the the Old Testament before the first century, then he lost already right here according to timeline. The timeline <laughs> made him lose immediately. I say so I take this out. I wanna hit my man I was busting my man with busting my man here with scriptures on type of scriptures, and every scripture that I read, it was talking about David was to return to be the Messiah. Je- Jeremiah thirty and six, Jeremiah thirty three seventeen through twenty six, Hosea three and five. I went through the whole pterodon showing that David was to return, and they announced me the winner. Over that that topic, and he's going to say, "Stop it, bro! Listen, <laughs> Sal, Sal, anybody anybody can go listen to it. Listen, any, anybody can go listen to it. So Solomon Solomon asked me. Solomon asked me. He asked me why why am I not waiting for David? I said because according to the New Testament, we I'm waiting on the Messiah Christ to return. Okay, like him, he's he's." He's waiting. He's waiting on Esau, according to how he understands in his Quran. He's waiting for Esau and someone else to come. You know what I'm saying? So he asked me why I'm not waiting the for Quran. David. I said, because I'm not. I'm speaking. I'm speaking to why Solomon voted for you. Uh, he voted uh, for you because he asked me why I'm not waiting for David to come back. I said because I'm waiting for the Messiah to come back, according to the Renewed Testament and what it says in there. He's coming back. I'm waiting for him. So you have other people like Weida who's waiting for 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 David, but I'm waiting for the Messiah. And he's asking me why, and I'm saying because I'm going by the text of the New Testament, and Solomon couldn't understand that. He got he got mad and upset and voted for Weeda because of that, which don't make no sense. You go listen to it yourself. That's what happened. Just, That's crazy for you to I go that think, way. That I, 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 just think, I just think being I, I just think being a neutral party, there is no way. I, I, I'll say this: there, there's no way being a neutral party here that Weeda Weeda could have won that debate. Just on hearing some of the responses alone that he's even saying, like when Amayan is asking him simple questions, he's not answering them. And he's going through different scriptures and not understanding none of the concepts that's being spoken in there, even though they're Hebrew concepts from Hebrew people who were speaking to other Hebrew people. And so it's I, kind of ridiculous to say, it, it, oh, just speaking from the, the understanding, if you're saying that. If, if you admit that I'm waiting for David to be raised from the dead and he has to come back before the Old Testament, that Old I, Testament, I, I, that, 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 that Old Testament, still in the Old Testament. If, I, this, this, if we, if we are this, still in the Old Testament, if we are still in the Old Testament. Yeah. Then you cannot believe nothing in this book. I just know you didn't say that, Matt. I just know you didn't say that. I did. I did. Oh my god! Because you hold on, hold on, because hold on. there's no let me way. Say what you, let me say what you what you messed up. Cause check this out. Throughout the old covenant, every time Israel went into captivity, Yah told us to keep the law, statutes, and commandments. When we didn't keep the commandments, y'all prophesied these curses was going to come upon us in Deuteronomy 28, which your Christ claimed that he delivered every man that hanging from a tree in Galatians 3 and 13. 
which we see that our people still was being hung in the 1960s and that our people still being killed in the street. The same as that way that the, Messiah, that the Most High prophesied is still going on today. But you believe that the, uh, your Christ is going to come back. And we still going through the curses right now. Are you serious? Right. Are you serious? Right. Because the, okay, pro- so, because uh, the problem is, the problem is, hold on. The problem is, is that in order for you to say that these curses have to stop, you would believe that David has to rise from the dead. No. Here's the issue with, no. wait, he doesn't have to rise from the dead? I ain't never, no, I ain't never saying that. I ain't never saying that. Don't put that in my mouth. So, so wait, 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 wait. You're, but are you waiting for David, yes or no? Hold on. This is what I'm saying to you, brother, and I'm going to explain myself. When he said he was going right, to raise a, a righteous branch from David, he's talking about somebody that's from the seed of David that encounters David's behavior, his ways, his attitudes, the way that he functions. Because if you notice in the Old Testament, he said, he never mentioned nobody's name in the future. That's what you don't understand. So when he said that the only way we could get away from these curses, you got to put down your idol. And when you read in Second Chronicles 15 chapter, let me read that right fast. Because, see, this is what, what he said what we had to do in you know, order for us to left, be though. delivered. Well, you know, we got five minutes left uh, Okay, let me read this right side. Second Chronicles 15. This is what he said right here. He said, And the spirit of the Most High came upon Azariah, the son of Oded, and he went out to meet Asa and said unto him, Hear ye me, Asa, and all Judah and Benjamin, the Most High is with you while ye be with him. And if ye seek him, he will be found of you. But if ye forsake him, he will forsake you. Now, for a long season, Israel had been without a true God and without a teaching priest and without law. But when they in their trouble did turn unto the Most High of Israel and sought him, he was found of them. In those times, there was no peace to him that went out, nor to him that came in. But great vexation were upon all the inhabitants of the country. All nations were destroyed of nations, what we're witnessing now, and city to city, for God did vex them with all adversity. Be ye strong, therefore, and let your, not your hands be weak, for your work shall be rewarded. And when Asa heard the words in the prophet, so old dead, the prophet, he took courage and put away the abominable idols out of all the land of Judah and Benjamin and out of the city which he had taken from Mount Ephraim and renewed the altar of the Most High that was before the porch of the Most High. And he gathered all Judah and Benjamin and the strangers with them, and Ephraim and Manasseh of Simeon. For they fell to out of Israel in the abundance that they saw that the Most High, his God, was with them. So they gathered themselves together at Jerusalem in the third month, in the 15th year of the reign of Asa, and they offered unto the Most High the same time of the score which they had brought 700 oxen, and 7,000 sheep, and they entered into a covenant to seek the Most High God of their fathers. They renewed the covenant, because every time Israel came out of captivity, they read from the Old Testament. And if you read Ezekiel 43 to 15, he says that I was going to be his priest. Ezekiel 43, 19 through 27, the altar is being renewed, eight day of sacrifice, and we enter into the covenant again. So, so you go so, you so go back you, and read that. You go back and read no, no, that. No, no, no. See, because so here's the problem with that. So here's the problem with that. You're you're saying that you're still waiting for someone because the Mashiach is not here. Oh. According to the saint, uh, according to the prophet, the Most High told Dawood. That no, uh, that it that it would not fail that a person I, through him, through him, would not sit on the throne. Okay. Okay. So, since we got Gentiles in the land, or I, I'm I'm assuming they must be the house of Yehuda or something like that, according to you, 
because I'm trying to no, figure don't out. Don't put words in my mouth. Don't put words no, no, in my no, mouth. No, no, no. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Don't hold say according to me. That what okay, I'm wait, wait. Did. So, so give me, give me an understanding. Give me an understanding. Who, who is going to come out with a quote unquote long of strategy to say that they are of the house of David and be able to sit on the throne? Who is that person? Hold on, this this is, I don't know, and I'm not gonna say I know. So I'm saying what, and they clean it. Hold on, let me answer the question, brother. Ezekiel four and sixteen said the people that still exist are, are, are the tribe of Israel still exist to this day. Cause you, Mac Thomas, claim to be from Israel. You claim to be an Israelite, don't you? Is that true? Sure do. Okay then. Yeah. So the fact so the fact is this. Don't touch that dial. You're now listening to the Bay Talkie Radio. Alright, I gotta jump in, y'all. <laughs> I'm gonna wrap this up, y'all. Once again, it was a good open mic. Once again, classic. I appreciate everybody that called in. Again, it was for everybody to call in. You know, we're gonna do another one of these, and a lot of people like these open mics, so we're gonna keep it going. Of course, give us your feedback on the, on the YouTube. But I'm gonna let everybody get some last words before they go. So let's go to let's go to Matt. Last words, Matt. All right, had to be me first. Okay. No, um, I, I I think it's, there's an issue with that. There there's he just said I don't know. Okay, so anybody could rise up, even out of our own brothers, can rise up and say I'm of the house of David. I'm going to be king. If you don't have a standard of who this person is, if you can't even figure out according to the prophet who this person is, then everything. That's what I'm saying. You have no reason to believe in this book because you have no substantiated evidence to actually pinpoint that this person is not it. That's the issue. I mean, come on. It, it's like if you're gonna if you're gonna uh, uh, gripe and complain about somebody's genealogy, at least be able to say that the person who's gonna rise up has one, a legitimate one, because we don't even have no genealogies, and we're supposed to be of the house of Yehuda and all these other different tribes. So what's the what? So what are you gonna? What are you really going to do? What are you gonna test here? What what are you gonna go back to? Because the problem is, is that if you're gonna have a if you're gonna say you stick to this book, and you're not even gonna recognize that the people who saw this man, slept with this man, ate with this man, was was walking with this man. You mean to tell me they're so deaf, dumb, and blind that they can't tell that this person is clearly not of the house of Dawu, even though he had a genealogy to prove that. They, he clearly has no authority of the Most High, even though he showed signs of wonders to prove that. And he clearly showed that he was clearly the, uh, who he said that he was when the Pharisees knew that. That's why they could not, that's why they even had to bring false people against him. So that's letting you know you're just getting cut every single where. It, 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 it doesn't even make sense. It doesn't even make sense because you can't bring no substantiated evidence of who we are and where we can get a genealogy to match up to one individual who's supposed to be of the house of David and sit on the throne and supposed to be a righteous person. Because ain't nobody righteous from the house of Yehuda except this one. We got to get cleaned up, and that's according to the prophets. You know this. As soon as we get back, we don't, we don't even get back into the land. We have to go to, through the wilderness first to get purged out, and then we go back into the land. So who in the world could be a righteous branch if we're all wicked and we got to be cleaned out? Well, we have this one who never was wicked, who was clearly the standard, and, he has, and, and through him, you have to go through This is the issue. If you have no standard, you have no reason to speak because you have nothing to go back to, and you have no way to prove your point. It's just ignorant conjecture, and that's all it is. You have an issue with these people who are supposed to be your own brethren who got enough sense to know, regardless of they're ignorant or knowledgeable, they have more sense to know who this man was, and that's why they could not bring nothing against him. These people were walking next to him, and clearly when he asked them, who do they say that I am, one said that you're a prophet. One said that you're John. Who do you say that I am? I think that you're the Mashiach. 
the son of the living Yah, uh, the son of the living Yah. How did he come to that understanding? That's it, man. All right, man. Appreciate you for coming on the open mic. Let's go to Amayan. Last words. All right. Uh, thank you, sir, for calling me back on the show. Uh, I'd like to say shalom to Brother Weida, shalom to Brother Mac, shalom to Brother Brother Jay that was on here, uh, Brother Israel for calling in with a couple of questions, shalom to all you brothers. Um, I think Weida just have a, I think Weida been poisoned against the Renewed Testament. Um, he makes statements that it's plagiarized and he can show this and show that, and that's conjecture, of course, because you gotta you got to prove what you're saying. Um, I'm sure that, you know what I'm saying, he can't prove what he's talking about because for hundreds of years, people have said these things about the New Testament, and it's constantly been proven that the book does not plagiarize worse the Old Testament. It wasn't making any sense. It's actually agreeing with the Old Testament. How is it plagiarizing something that it's quoting from? How it doesn't make any sense to me. It's not plagiarizing it. It's confirming it when it quotes from it that these things are being fulfilled in this time right here. So um, I don't know who's telling them these things or showing them these things, but clearly they're incorrect. You can also find extra biblical sources outside of the, the Bible, the Renewed Testament, uh, and the writers that confirms uh, the Messiah being an actual living uh, character, a man that actually lived and walked the earth, and the things said about him is actually uh, uh, true. Um, so I, I don't know what he's saying about it. It's, 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 it's being fake. Um, if he wants to debate that, I mean, it doesn't have to be me. I think Matt can debate him. I think Brother Jay can debate that and, and win that uh, very very easily. Um, you know what I'm saying? So uh, the the things that we clearly don't understand, I want to bring up one of them that he mentioned about the Messiah is not mentioned at all in the, um, the Old Testament. I want to read it in Isaiah chapter 62, um, verse 11. It says, uh, Behold, Yahweh have proclaimed unto the ends of the world, say unto the daughter of Zion, Behold, thy salvation cometh. This is this, this uh English word salvation is the Hebrew word um, Yahweh Shai, or some say um, Yeshua or Yahoshua, but that's the Messiah's name. And it says, uh, cometh, then it goes on to say, behold, his reward is with him, showing you that this is an individual that has the name of salvation, which is the Messiah's name when he came and walked the earth. It's an individual. It goes on to say, and his work before him that he has something to do. This is clearly here speaking of an individual, and it, it names him, and this is the Messiah's name, and the Messiah, according to the New Testament, had a work before him to do, to go ahead and die for the nation of Israel. And when he comes back, he has his reward with him. When you read Revelation chapter 22, I think, at the end of it, it speaks of him coming back with his reward. So these things only fit one person when you go through the history of the Scriptures. Does it fit nobody else? So this is clearly establishing the Messiah in the Old Testament. And earlier, like I said, I asked him about Hosea chapter 11, show me that that was a call, and he couldn't show that it was a call. So clearly we are proving the fact that the Messiah in the Renewed Testament is the Son of God, according to Hosea chapter 11, which he never refuted. And yes, he is waiting for David, because we debated it, and he said that he was waiting for David in the debate. You know, he's not saying no now, you know what I'm saying? So he's waiting on David, and we're waiting on the Messiah. So that's that's where he stands. Is And according to chronology, according to Daniel's chronology, the Messiah is supposed to have come in the first century. If you can go read it for yourself, Daniel chapter 9, do the math for yourself, he's supposed to have come in the first century. And clearly David did not come back in the first century. But yet he's waiting for David to come back, which I'm not knocking him for that. But the one prophesied to come back and return and rule, according to the to the angel Gabriel, in Luke chapter one, is the Messiah. He is the one given the throne of David, according to the angel, not according to us messianics. This is coming from the angel Gabriel, who got it from the Most High God. And if we don't, if we don't believe that, then he can't believe what's recorded in Daniel's from the angel Gabriel, who was speaking to Daniel back then. You can't believe what he says to Daniel in the book of Daniel's. But don't believe what it says to Mary in the book of Luke. It's the exact same angel speaking the same thing. So you can't be partial in the message from the same angel. If you believe one, you got to believe both. And I'm going to leave it right there. And again, shalom to all the brothers. All right. I uh, appreciate you coming on. No open mic. All right. Let's go to Wida. Last words. Okay. 
this is what I, I want to address, right? Because he said something about the book being pleasure, uh, not being pleasurized. And this is what I, I'm going to read. It said, Ezekiel 20, verse 19, I am the most high, your creator. Walk in my statutes and keep my judgment and do them and hollow my Sabbath, and they shall be a sign between me and you that you may know that I am the most high, your God. <clears throat> Notwithstanding the children rebelled against me, they walked not in my statutes, neither kept my judgment to do them, which if a man do, he shall even live in them. They shall pollute my Sabbath. Then I said, I will pour out my fury upon them to accomplish my anger against them in the wilderness. Nevertheless, I withdrew my hand and walked for my name's sake that it should not be polluted in sight of the heathen. <clears throat> and whose sight brought them forth, I lift up my hand to them also in the wilderness that I will scatter them among the heathen and disperse them through the countries. Because they had not executed my judgment, but had despised my statue and had polluted my Sabbath, and their eyes were after their father's idol. Watch this. This is for Brother Jay. This is for Matt Thomas. And this is for Amayam. And verse 25, he says, Wherefore I gave them also statues that were not good, and judgment whereby they should not live. And I polluted them in their own gifts, and that they caused to the pass through the fire all that opened the womb, that I might make them desolate to the end, that they might know that I am the Most High. So, yeah, the Most High said he polluted the book because of the fact that Israel disobeyed the commandments. Proverbs 25 in verse 1 and 2, these are the also Proverbs of Solomon, which the men of Hezekiah, king of Judah, copied out. It is the glory of God to conceal a thing, but the honor of kings is to search out the matters. I study this book. So I go through this over and over. I write down scripture. I go according to the law, statutes, and commandments, which y'all say is done away with. Y'all say he polluted the book due to the fact that the, our people was being arrogant toward the law, statutes, and commandments, which you must study in order to know what's true and what's not true. So the thing is, I'm going to say again, I don't have no problem debating nobody. It's all good. You're going to say what you want to say, and you're going to believe what you want to believe. <clears throat> when according to the scriptures that we know, David is to come back, he said he was going to restore everything as it was. Christ is not mentioned in the Old Testament. And until these brothers truly search with their mind and heart, with the Most High Spirit guiding them to the truth, they're going to be continue to be caused up into delusion. And Yah said he will give you your own thoughts to deceive you, and when the last day come, he's going to kill you. Read that Isaiah 66, 1 through 4, and see if Yah is playing with you. You see what I'm saying? So the book that you read is not us because it's Greek. And you claim everything about it being validated. But if I could research through history, what you say, oh, because you wasn't there. I don't got to be there. My research and my studies are going to validate, and they're going to clarify to the Most High's word. So when I do research, and if it lines up with the Most High's word, I know what's true, and I was know what's not a, a what's true, and I know what's false. So, like I said, Mike Thomas, I would love to debate you. I'm a young. I will clearly destroy you again. I look forward to demolishing Brother Jay. Well, all you brothers who believe into this Christianity thing. Y'all gave us a heritage and not religion. The book is false. And if you want to go through the fire where you over here baptizing your kids in the name of J.C., where he said there is no God beside me, and he said that he never mentioned J.C. as being the son, you can continue the followers in the ways of the Most High who said that he polluted the book in order for you to be become desolate. 
Why? Because our ancestors didn't obey. And you doing the same thing. So if you ain't studied this book and researched it, you got a problem. Because he told you not to worship in nobody else's name but him. And when y'all pray, y'all give reverence to JC. And you bogus for that. So I look for, again, I love South Sunshine. I like being on a platform. I look forward to demolishing any brother that come up and speak against the Most High's word. I would love to sit them down. Straight up. Because if we don't got no love, we don't got no understanding. And that book is the one that divides us from being a people and coming together as a nation. So, again, thanks for letting me be on the platform. I like the platform. I enjoy the company of the people. <clears throat> Even though I'm my young, my adversary, but he's a cool brother. I, I, I like dealing with him. I like debating him because he's fun to just mess with. 